another NASCAR Heat 5 championship mode with Tyler Reddick. Uh, we have won our fourth race of the year, which was yesterday. We were at the Great Coliseum, the Thunder Valley, the greatest, the fastest uh, mile track, and the Bullring, which was awesome. Bristol. And actually, we it felt like a Coliseum, and it felt like I was in Rome because of the contact with the AI. And if you go back to my other video, I was ranting about the AI and the contact, especially with these short tracks. So there you go. That's how I was with uh, uh, Bristol. So stories of the race. Uh, um, we'll see if um, who was it? Eric Jones. Eric Jones uh, fell out of the. I think he fell out of the playoff talk. Yeah, he did. He fell out. He was the one that fell out. Him and William Byron. So remember when I was talking about uh, uh, yesterday when I said somebody fell out of the playoff talk, the playoff standings. It was Eric Jones. And uh, William Byron, William Byron, he really didn't he he really didn't uh, uh, finish well in Bristol, and Eric Jones DNF. So after that DNF, Eric Jones fell out of the playoff talk. So that's why, that's why I said, guys, in my last video, that welcome viewer to to my uh, to my stream. But uh, that's why I sat there and said that somebody fell out of the playoff standings, and I really couldn't figure out who it was. It was Eric Jones, because Eric Jones DNF. So I found a setting on this game that you can turn the uh, it, the manic the uh, uh, the mechanical failures for the AI. I heard you can turn them off, so you know there won't be so much DNFs. So I, I don't really like to change the settings on my game. I like to keep the settings like it is. But you know, like sometimes the, the game will DNF the AI. Just, you know, because there's DNFs in real racing. So, maybe some races I'll fuck around with the a with, with the settings a little bit and, ch and change the uh, mechanical uh, failures. And not have so much DNFs so much because it really hurts the AI. Uh, it really hurts the AI in point standings, especially when you're trying to do a simulated race. But anyways, we have started... I, I, again, I started off poorly. Look at Look at, look at that. Look at my uh, qualifying uh, standings. <laughs> uh, so again, I really struggling with qualifying this year as I have not got a top 10 or not even a top 5 th all this year. So we are at the Toyota Owners 400 for episode, I think this is episode 8 or 9, I'm not sure guys. But I put a bunch of videos on my channel and uh, they're like 3 hours long, 2 hours long. So I, I, that's just how I am. I like to play the full race and the full experience of NASCAR 5 and the full laps of the game. So uh, again, we're going to get a great history on this great track here at uh, Richmond. So it's it's Richmond Raceway. It is a 0 0.75 mile and 1.21 kilometer D-shaped asphalt racetrack. So again, Bristol, when we were at Bristol, it was concrete. This one is asphalt. So it said it was located just outside of Richmond, Virginia in Unicorpit, Harmonica County. So that's where it's located. It hosts the NASCAR Cup Series and the Xfinity Series and the Indy Series. Um, uh, and, the, and the Truck Series for the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. So again, it hosts a lot of races and racing events. It's known as the Great American Premier Short Track, as it formerly hosted the illustrated events of the IROC series, Denny Hamlin's Short Track. So again, this is Denny Hamlin's track, I guess, and he wins here a lot. I don't know that, guys. I'm just, I don't know. So don't, don't sit there and say, oh, you're lying, because I don't know, okay? I'm just saying it. I, I have to look it up, okay? It's, um... The showdown at the USA Sprint Cup Series is uh, due to Richmond's Raceway unique D-shaped oval track. So it's a D-shaped track, unlike Bristol, where it was like an oval track. This one is a D-shaped track, which allows drivers to reach high speeds over at 200 miles an hour. Richmond has been, no been known as the short track king. 
So again, drivers in NASCAR and even in motorsports that drive here in Richmond, they say it's it, they can um, uh, they love driving here because of the um, uh, of they can reach high speeds at such a short time and a short track. Richmond ha and, and it's called the short track king. That face that races. Um, uh, Richmond has, uh, yeah, it's, it's called the short track that races like super speedway. So I guess this 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 Richmond uh, this track races like a speedway, which is very interesting because of the because it's it's unique D shape, uh, uh, this uh, D shape shape of the track. So again, it races just like a speedway. You can hit probably like 190 something like oh, maybe like yeah, I don't think you can go 200 miles an hour on Richmond but I'm pretty sure you can reach high speeds um, at very high speeds uh, unlike a short track where you have to actually uh, you know like uh, put your RPMs to benefit you like the track so again Richmond different that's why it's called the short track king and it has multiple racing lines and grooves the high side on straightaways and then they break low down in the turn so again Richmond very unique in this d-shaped thing where you where the straightaway you like to ride high and then you break down low I call it die bombing to the like what the AI does in this game I call it die bombing towards the bottom so again they go up high in real life and they break down low just to, so they won't lose speed so it has multiple racing lines and grooves and probability for contact. So again, in real life, like I said in Bristol, a lot of contact. So it's not because they are making contact with you in real life. So this track has a known for making contact in real life. There's a lot of contact with the cars in real life in Richmond because of the high speeds and how the track is set up and how the track is made. It's a D-shaped track, very congested, just like Bristol. So it's a lot of contact in real life. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of contact with the AI here. As you go back to my last video, there was a lot of fucking contact. And I got pissed off, and I was ranting. And I'll probably do a little ranting today. Just because I know how the AI is in this game. So again, in real life, it's known for a lot of contact. Richmond is favorite among NASCAR drivers and fans. So again, this this track is very beloved by the fans and is very beloved by the drivers that drive here. The NASCAR drivers they love coming to Richmond. Um, the coordinate, uh, the capacity is over 51,000. So again, 51,000 fans can attend here. That's the max capacity that Richmond can hold. The owners of, of that own this track is called International Speedway Corporation. So again, again, that's the owners of the track. It first opened in uh, October 12th of 1945, so that's when the track opened. Its former names is Richmond International Raceway, which all tracks used to be called International Raceway. It didn't matter. Bristol International, Daytona International, before it was a motor speedway or a super speedway, they were called International Raceways or Speedways or even tracks. And again, it just holds so much thing in the surface is asphalt. So just like, you know, it, it, just unlike Bristol, it's asphalt so it's asphalt type of surface so enough about Richmond that's the history of Richmond Raceway again guys I am not really too familiar with this track I haven't tr I haven't played it on here I, I, I haven't even played it on uh, video games in other racing games so I'm I'm really new to uh, this track I have not played that's why I've started off so, so poorly I mean I knew what I was doing in Bristol because I, I played Bristol in other racing games and I uh, practice uh, in this game with Bristol but with uh, uh, Richmond I have no idea what I'm doing I don't have no idea about the turns um, I'll po that's probably why I'm starting in the back and I'm pretty I I'm happy I'm starting in the back because if I were to start in the front I would just slow the cars down because I don't know about the track so I'm starting in the back and I you know, if I get lapped, I get lapped. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get lapped. I'm going to run a really, really tight setup. As you see my slider up here, 
as the car setup is, it's very, very tight. So I'm going to experiment with these setups. Again, I'm going to experiment with these setups for the tracks. Really not a good idea to run a tight setup here in Richmond because of the of the of that really big turn that you have to dive bottom towards the bottom. So I'm probably going to be drifting up because of the springs of the setup of the car. Again, these default setups, they, they're not made to have a lot of rotation on the cars. I noticed that. So, again, I probably have to really slow down on those turns. Because I'm not going to be able to hug the bottom because my car is not going to have pretty much good rotation. Which is fine by me. And uh, just to clear things up, when I, when I was ranting yesterday about custom setups and how garbage they are in this game. Let me refer to that. Custom setups are not garbage. Okay, they're not garbage in this game, but I play realistically and I like to have realistic outcomes with the AI And I just feel like if you have I mean I can go right now and tune my car up a, 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 To fit this track and have a major advantage over the AI But I choose not to do that. Why? Because I like to keep things balanced With me and the AI I like to keep things competitively with the AI. I don't want to have an advantage with these. When you play these championship modes or any kind of thing, any kind of series uh, uh, with sports, with these sports games, you never want to have an advantage over the AI because then it gets too boring and you'll start to win a lot and then the season will become non-existent. Again, I am ahead a lot in points right now. I can afford to lose a couple races in a row and not be affected by it because of the point standings because I have a huge amount of lead so again that's why I don't run custom setups because I am not I'm not saying they're garbage in this game with the AI I don't run custom setups I don't even think like I guess they have a pro league in this game where you can go online I don't know I, I, I not like I said I'm really new to the heat game so I don't really know but I'm but even I think even with a default setup, you can actually win on online if you really know what you're doing. A custom setup is just to tune your car. Like if you don't want the car to be too tight, you can fuck around with the with the with the anti roll bar, or you can fuck around with the camber, or, or the suspension of the car, or the weight of the car. You know, how I said last last uh, last uh, in my last video where I said the car felt heavy. You can fuck around with the weight. And the ride height side of the of the car, so I'm not saying that they're garbage. Like they're garbage, you know. Like, awesome. but I, you have some kind of advantage over the AI. Now, if you can lose with a custom setup, I mean, I've seen people lose with custom setups to the AI. It's all about your type of feeling and what you like in the car. That's all custom setups are. But custom setups should not. Uh, custom setups should not benefit you in or giving you an advantage and that's what I was talking about last yesterday in my other video and in, in Bristol when I was raging and ranting I wasn't really raging I was ranting and I said that you don't want to have an advantage over the AI custom setups are just for your liking of the tuning up the car they're tuning up the track they're, they're, they're basically tuning up the car for an advantage not just with your AI, not with just the AI, or not even an in, in advantage over the, your opponent, but it has it has to fit the track's dimensions and how the track is shaped. That's what custom setups are for. They are to uh, have the car um, have an advantage and, and really fit the track. Because again, I said that these even the default setups, or if you, if you even if you run a custom setup, this game has track randomness. And what I mean by track randomness is that whatever t whatever car setup that you use in this game, it affects the track. So if you, I'm running a real tight setup, right? I'm probably going to be have to be really slow because I'm again my car is not turning because of uh, how tight it is. Okay, so Richmond, you know, you probably don't want to run a tight set, a very tight setup. I actually am running the um, very tight setup. But you really don't want to be running a tight setup here in Richmond. I'm just experimenting with the car setup. Again, I'm going to say it again. It's the, it's the track that you're on with the setup that you're using. It's the track that you're on. It, the track has randomness to it. And with, just like in real life, if you run a tight setup in uh, Michigan, 
or in um, Chicagoland, you're not going to be able to hug the bottom that well because you can't turn that well. Again, it's just how the car is set up for the track. So the developers did get it right with this, with with, with the car setups, and, but they kind of overdid it with the track randomness. So whatever setup that you use, it has the track will the track will have a big benefit or a big impact of what kind of setup that you're using just like in real life and again when I said that the, the CPU has an advantage over you in some kind of tracks and you have the advantage over the AI I did not I, I still think that's the way how it is in this game because I said in my last video that the tire that the CPU won't go on tire wear they will only pit on that uh, fuel I do not know that but that's just how I feel okay so don't sit there and say oh you know this guy doesn't know what he's talking about and blah 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 and blah 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 I don't know that I don't really know that I, like I said I'm really new I, this is my first heat game that I played so I don't really know but that's how I feel that's what I feel when I play these games when I play this game that the AI has some sort of an advantage over me, and especially in pitting situations. And I always say that they always take fuel. They don't really, they don't really go on tires. But when I was, I, I did an exhibition just to try to try it out. I played Indianapolis Speedway, and I noticed that um, I had to pit way too much, uh, like green flag runs. I had to pit way too much on green flag runs for tires. And the AI did not. The AI was staying out there a couple laps longer than what I was. And then they'll pit for fuel and tires. So yeah, I think this game kind of benefits the AI in some way. And kind of benefits you. In the, in, 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 in. You ever notice that when you're out there and the AI will pit? And you're out there. You can go out there a couple laps longer. And it, that's how it is in some tracks. I think some tracks advantage over the AI and advantage over you. Now I'm not saying that you're gonna lose off of that because you can still win like that but it's very tedious and it's very noticeable in this game that I noticed that sometimes your tire wear will go out like in Kentucky my tire wear was going out faster than the AI's um, in some tracks my fuel will last longer than my tires um, my, my, my fuel will drain more than my tires and it's like that with the AI in some of these tracks so that's what I'm trying to say so that's what I feel, okay? Because I tested it out and I played it. So enough about that, enough about the ranting. And um, I just wanted to get that off my chest to say that custom setups are not garbage. Because I use custom setups in my other racers like Project Cars 2 and Gran Turismo and Dirt 4 and, and, and a lot of, and, and, and a set of Corza and, and Formula 1. I use a lot of custom setups because in those games you have to use custom setups because I race competitively online with other people. But when you're facing the AI you really don't need a, to use a custom setup because they are running the default setup. That's how, they, that's how they are programmed. It's just they are magically turning and having magical tire grip and that's why they're able to turn on a dime like that and hug the line. It's really cheap and tedious that you can't do that. But whatever, I'm not trying to rant here, I'm just trying to, you know, enjoy this series with Tyler Reddick. So again, I, I, I did horribly, I hit the wall in, pra in, in qualifying. So again, I'm probably going to hit the wall again, guys. So again, let's get this all the way. I, I, again, t uh, uh, after this is Talladega, which I can't wait to play Talladega. Because the last Super Speedway I played was Daytona. And that was the, actually that was the, um, uh, you know the, the first race that I played on this so again let me do a little bit a, 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 a manufacture wars so uh, as I said that Toyota won a race this year in my season uh, which was um, um, Daniel uh, Daniel Hemrick I'm sorry uh, Martin Truex Jr. represented Toyota put Toyota in the victory lane for the first time so he put Toyota in the uh, he got Toyota a win for the first time this year in my season uh, um, Jimmy Johnson put Chevrolet as he won Daytona and um, uh, Kevin Harvick put Ford in the victory lane uh, in Atlanta but as far as that Chevy is winning the war because I have won four races and I, I represent Chevy so Chevy has done more than Toyota and 
four in my season. So what a great job by Chevy of really winning that war and putting their cars in victory lane a lot more times than Toyota and Ford. So that, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to get off my. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, here we go at the Toyota's owners 400 at Richmond. Here we go, guys, and I'm on the tightest setup. As you can see, I'm on the tightest setup. So again, my car is going to not be able to turn. So there you go. Let's get it going, guys. Richmond, Richmond Raceway. Here we go. Here at Richmond, Virginia. So here we go. Stories of the race is Ryan Priest has been struggling all weekend. Let's see if he can turn around. That is true. Brad Kowalski fell to a technical inspection. Brad Kowalski is starting at the back. Kenny Hamlin is your pole winner. He is up near. He is your pole winner. So here we go. Uh, green, uh, green flag is about to fly here in the air in Richmond, Virginia. So here we go. Oh God! It's already. It's already starting to be bad, guys. I'm going to stay in the bottom because I don't want to stay up top and take all the AI. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to bump you. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh God. I'm drifting. I'm drifting. I'm drifting. Oh God. Oh God, Tyler. Oh, you got Justin Haley, right? Oh my God, Justin. Oh God, oh God, Tyler. And I kissed the wall right there. As I forgot to, as, as my traditional would say, I forgot to change the paint scheme. I mean, I, I, we were in the ca Caterpillar uh, paint scheme, so that's that's my paint scheme right here. I'm in the I'm in the uh, uh, the paint scheme over here, so that's that's what I'm running. Because again, why not? Oh, you just ran our fastest lap of the race, which was a 22 point. 0-9-1 So again, we just ran our back and back of the race As Brendan gone is Oh, I'm sorry Brendan I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut him I, I did not mean to dive bomb like that And I did not mean to cut in front of Brendan gone like that I am so sorry oh, We're going to have to break down here Ooh, this corner is a very tight corner to Kind of steer right there I, Again, this is my very first time playing Richmond, guys. So I don't really, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, I haven't been to a lot of NASCAR tracks in real life before, but I watch, um, I watch it. On, I watch. Ooh, I'm sorry, please. Um, I watch Richmond. Actually, I watch it in real life. Um, Stay on the bottom. Clear to the right. Yeah, I can already tell that this setup is very, very tight. Like you can't turn. You're drifting up, and I'm really fighting with my. I'm, I, and I, actually, I'm using the controller. I'm not using my wheel. I don't really like to use the wheel on this game because it, it does. I don't think it really. Um, like you don't really. I don't really say benefit from it. It's just. It's just not really. Um, I don't know, guys. It's just. I feel like the controller is somewhat. I don't know, I'm not better, I just feel like it's more, um, like, it's less work that you have to do in this game, like, like, especially with these cars, I mean, stock cars are heavy to turn, so the developers did get it right, that's why you can't turn in this game, and it's like real life, I mean, you can't turn precisely with a stock car, you're really drifting up when you try to turn, it's just, it's just the setup that you're using for the end of the track, but the developers did get it right with that, but what they did, I mean, I'm not, not what they did, but with, with a wheel, when you try to do that, sometimes it doesn't turn. You have to turn excessively to the left. I mean, I got a 1080 degree, I got a thrust back to 300, and I got a fanatic wheel. 
and I had to I had to turn my wheel like a lot. And it's just so much work that you have to do. So I just think that the wheel in this game is really not significant. I can I can play with a controller and be fine and um, not make contact with the AI. So um, again, as you see, I made I made a, I made a couple contact with the AI, but it's not so significantly. And they're not look at look at look at the AI. They're not playing dirty. They're playing clean, like I was saying in my last video when the AI was trying to fuck me under the wall in Bristol. So again, Richmond is known for having a lot of contact in real life, but in this game, it's not happening. Look at they're all in a single file line, all in a preferred racing line. That's how it is in real life. This game does a great job of replicating racing lines, like I was saying in my last video. You have to play like it's real life. You can't be on the bottom all the time. You can't bump your way up to the, you know. As you see, guys, when, at my gameplay, I'm not trying to, you know, bump the AI at all costs. I'm not trying to, you know, bump my way up to the top, spin them out. I am, I mean, I am racing very professionally. As Josh Pelicki is coming up, and he's probably going to overlap us. Josh Pelicki, he might, you know what, Josh Pelicki, he might have a, um, a chance to win this race because he, you know, he's been in the top 10 all year. So Josh, Joshua, he has a chance to actually um, uh, win the race and actually uh, be up to that playoff. So Josh Balicki has absolutely been, been tearing it up this year as far as uh, races go. So what a good job by Balicki of showing that Chevrolet uh, and, and, and um, that that team, and I don't really know if Josh Balicki is really like good in real life, guys. I know he races in the Xfinity Series, so I don't know, I mean, in the Cup Series, too. I don't know if he's really that good. Like I said, I don't watch a lot of NASCAR, so I don't know much about drivers. I, I know I know a lot about drivers, but I don't know what they're, like, doing over their career in NASCAR. So I don't know if he really is, like, having a good year. I know he's probably not. I mean, this game, like, it'll take an average driver. And he'll be like in the top 10. Like Josh Balicki in my season, he's been like in the top 10 like all race, all, like all season long. Like even in the poll, like he'll, he'll win, like he'll get second or he'll get third or fifth or seventh. He'll be in the top 10 in polls every day, every race. And I just think that sometimes that's unrealistic. Like you're not going to be um, in the top 10 like all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, 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 that's. And, oh my god, save it, save it, there you go. Save it, save it, Gabe. Oh my god. Oh god, man. I don't mean to do that, guys. It's just the way how the game is programmed, I guess. I mean, I'm not trying to bump these guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like that. that. That's what I had a problem with at Bristol. When I would make contact with them, they would, after I made contact, they would spin out. Like, they would get loose. And it's just unrealistically how this game reacts to contact. Ooh, look at that, I hit the wall. Yeah, I am very, my car is very, very slow. As you see Josh Balicki up there, he's, he's catching up to us and he's about to lap us. And again, guys, I probably won't have a good outing here. I mean, I probably, I'm, I'm probably going to fail Tyler Reddick's goal, which is fine. I mean, I don't want to have an advantage over the computer, and I want to keep everything competitive. And that's what the computer's doing now. They are staying with me. And I'm, again, look at it. I'm in 26th place because of the difficulty. I am not bumping my, I'm not, it's not easy um, to go up to, 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 to the back, to the front. You see what I'm saying? It's a good mixture of racing. And I'm on 104 difficulty. I'm on 104. I'm not even on 105. And the AI is giving me a fight. They always gave me a fight. It's never that they were slow. It's just the tires were getting worn out, and it's just how the game is programmed. How in the late in the late run they will get slow, you will get fast, and I don't like that either. I like to keep everything balanced. But I, again, I don't like an advantage. I like to keep everything balanced with me and the computer. That's why uh, I don't. I can play on 105 because uh, in, in, in Xfinity series I play on 105 difficulty. Um, with my, um, I got a, I got an Xfinity series with, um, um, I, I have one with Josh Kowicki, but I also have one with Kyle Busch, which I'll, I'll, I'll stream that too, guys. I mean, if you guys want to see that, post a comment and let me know if you guys want to see that. 
Um, actually, I play legitimately with that one. I play with stages on, like in real NASCAR. I play with stages on and all that. As you see, Dr. Wiki just overlapped us because we're so slow. But anyways, yeah, um, I, I do that. So if you guys want to see that, uh, post a comment. And um, I play on 105 difficulty. The only reason why I play on 105 difficulty on the Infinity series is because I feel like the cars are slower in Infinity. And I want to make it more of a challenge for me. Because when I play on 104 difficulty on Infinity, they are really, really slower than the cup cars. So that's why I play on 105 on the Infinity series. Which I'm winning a lot of races too. Even on that series, I'm winning a lot of races. So, I mean, it's just... I just think 104 is a great mixture uh, of racing. Like, you're, you're not going to win all the time, but you're not going to you're not gonna dominate all the time. And I just feel like um, 105 difficulty, the AI, the game kind of overextends what the AI can do in 105. Just because they're on a harder difficulty. I just think the difficulty is cheap and... and uh, it's not it's a, it's a joke of a difficulty to me. It's, they're not hard on 105. It's just a lot of randomness to the game when they're on 105. Typically, you have to deal with. Plus, you have to really worry about where you're going. There goes our, there goes our um, teammate Austin Dillon. Um, but like, you have, there's a lot of randomness to this game. And what I mean by randomness is like, there's like being that. Oh no, 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 Austin, save it, save it, Austin. Did he save it? Yes, he did. Oh my God. Um, as you see, I saved Austin Dillon. Um, I didn't mean to do that either. Um, what was I going to say, guys? But yeah, like, there's a lot of, like, randomness to the game. And then you have to deal with DNFs and all that stuff. You really have, I don't know, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't think 105 is really worth it. I mean, you could, like I said, I mean, I, I, I dominate the computer on 105. It's, it's just sometimes that you're, you're just not going to, I don't know. I, I just think it's a joke of a difficult thing. I think 104 is better and it has a good balance of mixture and races, I guess. That's just my opinion, guys. I mean, like I said, guys, compose a comment if you think that, um, you know, if you, if you think that I'm right. I mean, you know, post a comment and say, hey, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, you know. I'm not saying 104, 104, 105 difficulty is bad or, you, you know, like it's a joke of a difficulty. What I mean by joke of a difficulty, I just mean like, the AI sometimes has magical, like even now they have magical tire grip as you see Kevin Hubbard hugging that bottom line, he's not even drifting up, he's hugging that line like a champion. It's just like that, and you can't do that. So I mean, why are you going to make the AI do that? I mean, you really, really have to slow down to hit a corner like that, and to hug the line like that. When I see the AI do it, they never slow down. They always, they always hug that line with top speed. Not unless their tire, even when their tire wear is going low, they still do that. So it's just more of that, guys. I don't know. That's why I play on 104. I just think it's a great mixture of racing. And you can be able to catch up a lot quicker. Like, you can catch up to the AI on 105 difficulty. But you have to wait a little longer for their tire wear to go out. Once their tire wear goes out, that's when you can catch up. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you can pass them on 105 difficulty, even with normal tire wear, like if they have normal tire you can pass them, but it's going to be a fight, it's going to be a battle, and it shouldn't be like that with some drivers, I understand with Kevin Harbrake and Kyle Busch, and all these top five cars, you know, they got good, they're good, and they're good drivers, and in their cars, they got good horsepower, so they should be able to keep up with you, but I'm talking about like this guy, Quinn Hoff, if I got, if I have a, a clean car, now I'm not saying that, with damage would be, but I'm saying in a clean car, like Timmy Hill, I'm saying in a clean car, okay, if I have a clean car, he shouldn't be able to stay strapped to strive with me, I don't care, he should not be able to stay strapped with me, he's not Kevin Harvick, he's not Kyle Busch, he's not Joey Logano, he's not Ryan Blaney, he's not one of these top drivers, he should not be able to catch, stay with me, and even beat me, that's what I have a problem with on 105 difficulty. I want a full difficulty, I can always win with the with the rest of the drivers and that's how it should be, like in real life. That's why I say it's a great mixture of racing. There's no way Timmy Hill should be even on fresh tires, there's no way Jimmy Timmy Hill can keep up with Kevin Harvick. There's just absolutely no way. That unless Kevin Harvick lets him or Kevin Harvick 
uh, vehicle is damaged. There's just absolutely no way that Timmy Hill, or even, I don't know, even uh, Benny Gaunt can keep up with Kyle Busch. And if you put this game on 105 difficulty, all the drivers will give you a fight. Like, every, all drivers are like Kevin Harvick. Like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, you know, Justin Haley right here, you shouldn't really be keeping up with Kevin Harvick. And that's what I see it when I when I play even on the AI like when I play 105 difficulty I see the the battles that the AI do against each other which is great racing it's but sometimes it's unrealistic like um Bobby like Bobby Carter which I call him Harrison Burton he should not be keeping up with him. he's a he's a fuck he's a, he's not even a real driver he should not be catching up with Kevin Harvick you know what I'm saying like, he should be beating Kevin Harvick at straight away. That's what I mean. I mean, I, I don't know, guys. I mean, I, I just think a five-star ride is better than a three-star ride. Even it's like that in a real NASCAR, you know, like like Michael McDowell's car. He's not gonna, he's not gonna beat Austin Dillon's car or Kevin Harvick or Kyle Busch. But if you put this game on 105 difficulty, he will, he will, he will give you a fight, which is realistically, but it's unrealistically because he stays with you, which is unrealistic. He should not be picking up. You should have more horsepower than he does. Because this car is slow. He's not an established driver. You see what I'm saying now? That's what I'm talking about with the mixture of 104 to 105 difficulty. When I'm 105 difficulty, anybody can keep up with you. But again, you have to slow down. Uh, you got, no, not slow down, but you have to wait until the tire wear. You have to wait until the tire wear depletes to able to catch up and keep up with them. That's all I'm saying. As you see, Kevin Harvick gave me a bump draft. And again, it's realistically, I guess, on 104, because as you see, you go back to my Atlanta video, where I did that my uh, 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 Atlanta video, I was able to draft the AI. And that's what it is in real life. I feel like I want to fight this because you can't draft the AI. The AI, because the they, I don't know, it's just more of they get speed burst and they stay in front of you and you really can't grab them. Only on super speedway you can grab them. You have the AI in 105 difficulty. You can't do it on speedway. And on 104 difficulty you can do that. I don't know guys, just post a comment and let me know if you experience stuff like that in this game. Like, if, like I don't know what difficulty you play on, but I play on 104 and I just think it's a great mix. I mean look at that, I'm getting overlapped. I'm getting over. How keep on saying that? I'm getting lapped by the AI. The AI is not laying down for me. They, they are giving me a fight, a killing, like in the real life. They're not, and actually the game is, and the AI is not cheating to do that. It's pure racing. That's what I love about this game sometimes. It has fundamental racing. It has common sense racing. Like I said, I'm a very simulated guy. I know this game ain't simulated, and I'm not trying to act like it's simulation. Because it's not, it's far from that. But it does have simulation fundamentals. And the AI is one of the best I've seen in a racer in a long, long time. I mean, it's, it's, this AI is even better than, Na uh, I was going to say NASCAR, NASCAR Thunder. One of the greatest games ever made for racing. It's a gem, go play it. But even this game, this AI is better than that AI. It's, it's one of the best AIs I've seen in a racer in a very, very long time. These uh, developers of 704 did a really good job and a great job with this AI. This AI is its one of the best I've seen in a racer in a very long time. They're very intelligent. It's just the, it's just the contact. The, the unnecessary... I don't even mean the contact. It's the unnecessary stuff that they do that pissed you off in this game. You know, it's like some tracks they forget to race. You know, they forget how uh, how to race. I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it happens, I guess. I don't know, guys. I mean, like I said, post a comment if you, that's what you guys think. I mean, that's what I feel. And I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'll be, like right now, I'll be doing the same thing on 105 difficulty. There'll be no difference. The only difference is, is speed. The AI has a lot more speed than you. And you have to wait till the tire wear depletes for you to be able to catch up and overlap. I mean, look. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, 
I'm not touching up to the pack right away. I'm not getting no suction draft or I'm not getting no speed burst to keep up. It's just fundamental racing. See what I'm saying? It's fundamental racing. And that's what I love about this game right now. It has fundamental racing in it. Now is it perfect? No, it's not. Because it has randomness to it. A lot of randomness to it. So it was the track. Just like in Bristol, and just like in Texas when I felt like it wanted to put me in the pit road. I'm just saying with the track element, with the randomness of the track, it's the setup that you use. The car setup has a lot of impact to what you what you run and on these tracks. It has a lot to do with your uh, with the track and how the track is made. Like this is a D-shaped track. If I was using if I was using a tight setup, I would be spinning out because of the asphalt of the track. Depending on my tire, depending on how much pressure I got on my tires. It's, the, it's all about the setup that you use in this game. The setup will benefit... The, the, if you run a... Okay, say if you run a custom setup on this game, this game will um, notice that you're running a custom setup on this game, and it will benefit you from the track. And it will have track randomness to it. What I mean by track randomness is that on certain turns or... Or even, I don't know, certain turns or straightaways... Uh, maybe on straightaways. I don't know on straightaways, but I know on turns they will have randomness to them. Like right now, I'm using a very tight setup and it feels like I wanted to drift up towards that wall up there. So I really have to keep turning my wheel, I mean, my controller to the left all the time. See what I'm saying? Because it's the type of setup that I'm using. Like I'm not, see, I'm not able to hug that bottom line, but Chase Elliott is not getting his speed burst. It's realistically. On 105, he would have speed burst down there. That's what I don't like. I like to keep everything balanced and realism. You see what I'm saying now? That's why I don't play on 105 difficulty. Because A, uh, I said AI. Chase Elliott would have gave it, uh, they go three wide as through the turn there. As Chase Elliott would have got a speed burst down there. You see what I'm saying now? That's what I'm trying to say. And that's why I'm trying to reach out to these developers. And I'm finally even trying to um, reach out to um, you guys and, and help view my videos. Because like I said, I'm not big on YouTube. I don't really know. I mean, I'm not really big, so I really can't. You know, my videos don't really get a lot of attention on YouTube. So, but if you're watching my videos, post, you know, support me and post a comment and say, yeah, I, I, you know, I, you are right. You know, that's what I'm experiencing too. I'm not saying that this game is garbage because it's not. Like I said, I'm praising the game right now because of how the racing is. I was just ranting on Texas and um, Bristol because I felt the AI was cheating me. That's all I'm saying. The AI would do certain things to you on certain tracks. And it's only on tracks. And it's the setup that you use too. The car setup has a lot to do with the track. I don't care what nobody says. The track, the setup that you use, this is in real life. If you race in real life, you are going to have your car set up for the, for the track, so you can have an advantage, like the track, of the track. You're not having an advantage over your opponents, you're just having an advantage, you just want to uh, have your car set up for the track. Depending if you want to run a tight or loose setup. So a lot of your, a lot of, of the track randomness in this game has to deal with your setup, your car setup. That's why I don't run custom setups. Because I don't want to have an advantage over the AI. But in, in, you, you know what I'm saying now? That's why I don't run custom setup. I, not, not even if I were to play online, I wouldn't even really use it online. Like I would use the default setup on. I don't feel like this game is made for custom setups. Custom setups are just like for like competitiveness, like Project Cars 2 and Grand Turismo online competitive uh, stuff. That's what custom setups are for. They're not for championship mode or going online and trying to bump your way up to towards the, the top of the leaderboard. That's not what custom setups are for in racing games. They're just to benefit you in competitiveness because you're not trying to beat your opponents by custom setups either when you're playing those games. 
like you're trying to benefit you from the track, on the track. Like if you feel tight, you want to loosen it up a little bit. Go into your button setup. That's what problem settings are for. It's to match the track turns and dimensions. And the tire wear. Or the left tire wear, but the tire pressure. Like if you lower your, like if you bump your tire wear up, you're going to be faster. Your car's going to be faster. If you bump it down, your car's going to be slower. That's why on the left side of the of the car, if you really look at the car tear here, that's why my my right my left my right side is burning up a lot more. Why? Because I'm turning a lot more, and I'm putting pressure on that right front and that right rear, which is kind of unrealistically because I think in in Richmond you, you'd be burning up the right rear. I don't know, guys. I, that's just that's how I feel about this game. Like that, that, that right rear is always magnified. Like it always goes out before the right rear does. Sometimes I notice that it's balanced. Or sometimes I notice that it, it, it just like, um, how do I want to say that? Um, the right rear, on some tracks, the right rear goes out more than the right front. But just like in real life though, I mean, you, you know, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that right, on that right side right now, on the car. I'm putting a lot of pressure by turning. <clears throat> Which I can, I can already tell that you know, this, this, this track ain't really that bad. I thought it was going to be a nightmare because of the contact with the AI. But you see Brad Kalowski passing with class. He passed me with class. This is what real racing and fundamental racing is all about. You see, I didn't make contact with Brad, and Brad didn't make contact with me. He side drafted me and got my draft and got, and got, got a good, 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 good draft and, and, and used that good forward, forward horsepower to pass me. And that's what happened. He didn't bump me into the wall or, or try, to, to try to pass me. This is fundamental racing. This game does, a, like I said, this game has great racing to it. It's just sometimes the AI just and hey, hey, look at we're on a green five run. This, this, uh, this, I mean, how many laps have we did? We completed already. I mean, 72 laps without a caution. A nice green five run. So that's why I say the cautions are not scripted. A lot of people that I watch say the cautions are scripted. They're not scripted. They might be scripted in some certain situation. Like if you play career mode, yeah, they're going to be scripted a little bit. But if you play like championship mode or something like that, they're not really that scripted. And I'm playing with strict yellows. This, this, I didn't change the settings. This is strict yellows. As you can see, I almost, I, I mean, they could have been a caution, but I saved my RCI teammate off the villain. From spinning out. This is fundamental racing. I think they almost go three wide through the turn there. Man, for being a short track king, this doesn't feel like a short track king. I don't feel like I'm fast. I feel like I'm slow. Because again, my RPMs. It's just the setup that I'm using. Again, the setup has a lot to do with the track in this game. Your setup has a lot to do with the track in this game. The type of setup that you use. That's why they have. When you have a custom setup, you're like, man, this custom setup kicks ass. Oops, I'm sorry, Ryan. But, um, yeah, you know, like you feel fast or whatever. It's, 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 the setup is benefiting you. Um, because of how the track is made. The track is really benefiting from your setup. 
or your car is really benefiting um, the track. Uh, the track is benefiting. Yeah, the car is benefiting you because of the car, uh, of your setup of your car. You are matching your um, the, the, the the track of the, of the car. But again, I mean, it could backfire on you in real life because you, know, you got to worry about wind and aero damage and um, what else? Um, you know, like track temperature. Track temperature has a, oh, this was our first caution. See, I'm gonna wrap down. Uh, I think Josh Belicki is, uh, on the lap. Yeah, Josh, oh, look at Cole Custer. Cole Custer's up there. Um, but, um, depending on, we're gonna pit here. Um, as track temperature has a lot to do with your tire, your tire pressure. Or your, uh, or, I don't know tire pressure. Your tire, I don't know about your tire wear. I think it is, yeah, tire wear. But we're gonna pit here. And we're gonna fix, uh, I don't know if we should fix, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fix the damage here. And go four tires, and yeah. See, as you notice, like my left side is 12, and my right side, my right side is like the third in the 30s. You always want that too. You always want less pressure, tire pressure on your left side because you're you're putting more pressure and weight on the right side of your car. You always want more pressure on the right side of your tires rather than the left side. Like if you go on a road course, sometimes your left side uh, goes out before your right side. So, uh, you know, it's really good balance by this game. I mean, I, like I said, man, I mean, I'm really impressed with this game, like, and what it represents. I mean, it represents racing really, really good. The only problem I have with it is that sometimes it just breaks that code and... and, and oh, Alex, Alex, oh, Chris, Chris, save it. Save it, Chris. Did you save it? I don't know. Yeah, he saved it. Oh, no, there was a caution. Got it. I don't know what happened, guys, with Chris, Chris but we're not going to pit. Like I said, guys, I am very, I'm not familiar with this track. Like, I don't really know about Richmond. I, I mean, not even in real life, I really don't know about Richmond. Dude, as Ryan Blaney's in 12th place, he's in 20th place. Wow, he's two laps down. As you see, BJ McLeod still in that top 20. I don't know, guys. It, uh, like I said, I mean, I don't really watch NASCAR that much. I mean, I do. Right, I mean, you, you don't have to watch NASCAR a lot to know about motorsports. Like, I, I know a lot about um, car setups and track temperatures. And, like, I know the fundamentals about racing. And I don't even watch NASCAR that much. I mean... Uh, no, I just know about stock cars, because I used to watch a lot of NASCAR when Dale Earnhardt Jr. was, um, I, I got all his, me uh, memorabilia, I got his die hard, I mean, I got his die cast hard, uh, car replica, and, you know, and sitting there right on top of my dresser, and, you know, that, that Chevrolet, that number 8 Chevrolet, Monte Carlo, that he used to drive, you know, I got that sitting right on my, um, dresser, I got his poster, I got, I got his, um, I got his shirts, I got his merchandise, I got his hats. I'm a big Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan. And when he left, I just stopped watching NASCAR. It's like your, it's like your favorite, um, it's like your favorite, um, sports, um, how do I want to say that? It's like one of your favorite, uh, ooh, is that, is, uh, uh, Ricky Stenhouse gets, uh, loose. Oh, save him, Ricky! Oh, I gotta save him, I gotta save him. No! Thank God, Alex Bowman saved uh, Ricky Stenhouse from causing another car. So again, you guys, I mean, there's a lot of contact with the AI here. Um, you know, just like in Richmond, in real life, this, this track has a lot of contact with your driver. But um, as I was saying, um, you know, just like in real NASCAR, like, there's a, I mean, I mean, not real, I used to watch NASCAR a lot, you know, especially when Dale Earnhardt was, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Like I said, I got all his memorabilia, posters, um, shirts, hats. I even got pajama pants with Dale Earnhardt Jr. You know, driving the number eight car for, um, you know, um, the Budweiser, uh, the Super Sport, uh, Monte Carlo, um, race car that he used to drive. So, but, I mean, I watch a lot of Formula One now, and, um, you know, I, I just know about, like, like, I just know about racing, um, 
like, I don't know, I just know about racing, um, logic, you know, like, I know about racing, uh, arguments of what setup you should use, um, you know, like, this is, like, like, this game had springs, like, you know, there's springs on the car, I don't call it car springs, I call it suspension, that's what it is, it's, it's suspension, it's, it's the ability to turn, um, freely, um, it's not so hard to turn, because these stock cars are heavy to turn. So you're freeing up the car by using hard springs. The more springs you use, the more the car will rotate. Just like an anti-robot. And this game is called the front sway bar, which I, I mean, I guess it can be called that, but I call it the anti-robot. The anti-robot does is just gives you a lot more rotation on the car, on your front end. Like, I, like right now I'm drifting up, the, the front sway bar will will um, will help me um, on corners. That's all it is. It's just to help you on corners, to help you clean. Um, like what Austin Dillon did. This. You know, I, I passed Austin, and Austin um, he used um, he to be able to turn uh, near that corner or that bottom line. He, that means his 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 anti robot. He's probably got a loose or he probably uh, loosened up his AD robot. So again guys, I mean, I know a lot about stuff like that. So that's why I, you know, like when I, when I use the default, oh, this was another, um, this was another flag. When I use the default setup in this game, I kind of know what setup is used. As there's cars smoking up there, we don't, we don't know who, who's car smoking up there, but we're not going to pit. Well, actually, I don't know. Actually, you know, we, we are going to pit, actually. Um, we'll pit, and we won't fix the damage, and no tires, and we'll get fuel. We'll get one half, we'll get a full can of fuel here. Just in case, you know, we get another green flag run, that we have enough fuel to be able to last us. As um, William Byron got the free pass, and we're, we're in the top 10, wow, we're, we're still a lap down, we moved up 6 spots, so I don't know how we got in the top 10, like, I, I, I don't think I was doing that good, but evidently we did, guys, and we got in the top 10. As there is, there is our Texas winner, Martin Truex Jr., who won Texas, so you know he's locked in the playoffs, you know he's pumped. But he DNF yesterday as he smacked the wall and he just gives Tyler Reddick a bump and says, hey, don't do that. Which I don't mind about that, guys. I mean, I did kind of like make contact with uh, Barton 2 Jr., but I didn't do it on purpose. But um, the AI um, had like a little bit of revenge on me, which I still think that's poor sportsmanship. I mean, I mean, that was an accident that I just did with Martin Truex. I didn't mean to do that. It's just like, I said, this game does things like that sometimes. And you don't really mean to do that. And this game just does things like that. But that was poor sportsmanship by Martin Truex of bumping me like that. Just because I bumped him. And that's not what you want to do. I mean, you want to show class. You want to show sportsmanship. And that's not really good sportsmanship. I mean, I know those they do that in real NASCAR. You know, like, they'll bump you just because you bump them, but, I mean, it's, it's just cheap and stupid. I mean, what are you proving by, by doing that? What are you accomplishing? You're not accomplishing anything. You're just making yourself look dumb and stupid, not competitive. I mean, not competitive, but um, you're just making yourself look stupid and, and ignorant. When you bump the AI like that, or the AI bump you like that, just make the AI look stupid and dumb. As, as I'm getting freight train right now. Um, I don't know if the CPU took tires. Look like they took tires because they're blowing right past me on that restart. Oh, as uh, Harrison Burton gets loose. Save it, Harrison. Oh, God, Dave. I had to save Harrison Burton from that. I, you know what? Lately, I've been saving the AI. Like, the AI's been spinning out on these shortcuts. And I've just been going right underneath them. Or right beside, right beside them. And I've been saving them from spinning out. So that's another that's another thing guys that you can do with the AI. Like if you it's like you know, if you are um, if you kinda make contact with them, because they're gonna spin out. If you kinda make contact with them and you see them spinning out like that, you can hurry up 
and go up there and save them. You can make, you know, like, you can kind of do like a barrier for them so they won't spin out. Like in real life. You know, sometimes on drivers, they save other drivers. You know, from spinning out. It's called good sportsmanship. You know, like, like... I don't really call him Harrison Burton. You know, I call him Harrison Burton in my season. But like Harrison Burton, he, he spun out, right? I didn't want to cost him to occur. So I went up there and had good sportsmanship and saved him. I didn't go right past him. That's just, it's just stupid. Like, it's not good racing when you race like that. I just think that you're selfish when you do things like that. That's not what racing's all about. Racing's not all about you. It's about the other drivers on the track and the respect that you have for them other drivers. That's what it is. Because it's okay to give a bump, like, you know, like, even you give your, 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 your rival a bump. Or your, um, even your teammates, you're giving them a bump, just get them out of the way. I don't mind that. That's good competitive racing. But what I do have a problem with is the, um, the driving up the wall. When they try to drive you into the wall, that's what I have a problem with. That's taking it too far and unnecessary. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's what I was trying to say yesterday in my video in Bristol as I was ranting a lot about the game. Especially with the AI, but you see with the AI, they, they, uh, again, on this on this track, they showed nothing but class. Nothing but class. Look at how the AI is driving. With class. With class. They're not, look at Michael McDowell, he's not trying to fuck me, he's not trying to fuck me into pit road, or he's not trying to fuck me into the wall. It's great racing. It's what racing's all about. This is what racing is right here. And if you think that's boring, then you should you should not watch uh, racing ever again. Because you don't know anything about racing. Go play wreck fast or something. If you want to bump into cars. Like I said, there's there's games like bumper cars that you can go out and they encourage you to bump into you know wreck. You wanna, you wanna do that? Go play that. A non-significant fucking game. That has absolutely no, no fundamentals about racing. I'm not, ooh, I'm breaking my hand. I'm not saying that this game has fundamental racing. And I still, again, I still, I say Joey Gate. I'm not saying that this game has fundamentals to it and racing fundamentals, but like I said, it does have some kind of simulation fundamental to it. And you can't have, you can't actually have a good race with them. Again, I'm having a nice, clean race with the AI. I am um, really hiding the flaws of this game. As I just, um, not made con I, I, I slightly made contact with Joey Gates, and he spun out. But again, I was there to recorrect the spin out. He did not call the caution. I helped him out. And in real life, he would give me a nod, like, thank you. If this was real life. See what I'm saying now? You don't have to be aggressive all the time. People think that oh, they, they watch Sports Center or they watch NASCAR and they see these crashes that happen and they figure that's what racing is all about. No, you don't see the full race. You don't see the great interactions. You don't see the drafting. You don't see the great side-by-side -side action. You don't see the fundamental racing. You just see the crashes, and that's what you think racing is all about. But that's not what racing is all about. It's just some stupid highlight that they put on Sports Center or or or, or, or uh, just to get attention. But that's not what racing's all about. This is good racing right here. And if you again, if any of you guys think that this is boring, then you don't know anything about racing. Nothing. Again. There, there are games that can actually, um, you know, like, uh, uh, encourage you to bump into, uh, to wreck, to wreck the AI. You know, there are games that, 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 that um, you know, establish that. I 
I, I, I think we're gonna get lapped. I think we're gonna get lapped again. I don't know how many laps I'm down. Yeah, I'm down a lap, so it looks like we're gonna be two laps down. And Josh Palicki is right there. It took Josh, I mean, it took Josh a while to get, you know, like up there or whatever, but it looks like Josh is gonna win his uh, first race of the year. Just by the way things are going. And again, it's gonna happen over the years, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, over a course of a, of a real season, you're not always going to be in the top 10, or you're not always going to be in top five, or even win rate. You're gonna have struggles. And again, I really didn't tune my car to actually uh, put the track either. I was just, I was just trying to experiment with the setup. But again, this, this setup that I'm using, it, it doesn't match this track. It doesn't benefit the track. My car doesn't benefit from the setup, the track, from the setup that I'm using. I'm really, really tight, and I really have to slow down for these corners, like, uh, tremendously. If I put my foot on the gas after I brake, I'm going to drift up towards the wall because of the horsepower of the, of the car. Like Ryan Blaney is doing right now. He's not speed bursting. I want to find difficulty who would a speed burst. Um, and hit that corner with ease, with top speed. I dare damn it. I want to play difficulty? No, it's realism. It's like real life. He doesn't have an advantage over me, and I don't have an advantage over him. And that's what I like. That's why I say 104 difficulty is a great mixture of racing. Sure, you can pass the AI a little easier on 104, on 104 difficulty, but if that's what you're trying to do, then, well, then you don't know anything about racing. You want to be able to help your teammates out in certain situations. If you, if you, if you, like when I come up on Austin Dillon, if we're on Tail Diego right now, when I come up on Austin Dillon and he's like in the top, like maybe top 15, I'm going to try to push him up to the top 10. I'm not going to pass him. That's what racing's all about. Helping your teammates or helping the others around you. That's how you establish yourself as a good driver. People will respect you a lot more. Other drivers will respect you. You see, I'm not trying to pass the AI at all costs. I'm not getting up near there and bumping them and, 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 and just forcing them out of the line. No, they get, why, why would I do that to them? Why would I force them out of the line? What am I accomplishing? By trying to get past them? What do you accomplish? How do you feel about that when you do that? How do you feel when you bump? Like if I bump Ryan Newman to spin him out? and hit him towards the wall. That can ruin his day. That can ruin Ryan in real life. That can ruin Ryan Newman's race. And you best believe after the race, he'll be down your fucking throat trying to fucking, trying to fight you. Because you had no business of taking his line. Because he was there first. And that's what the AI was trying to do in Bristol. The AI was trying to take my line, even though I was there. They don't, sometimes they don't respect your position. Or they don't respect your positioning. That's called bad sportsmanship and bad driving. That's all I'm trying to say, guys. I'm not trying to say that this game is perfect. Because this game is not perfect. This game has a lot of flaws. And a lot, and a lot of issues and a lot of balancing issues. But what it does have is great racing. Careful, still there. All and fundamentally clear. simulated racing sometimes. That's why it's not trash. Like, it's not garbage. It's, not, it's a playable game. But is it the best game or the best racing title that I've played in a long time? No. The best racing title I've played is iRacing. That's the best racing game I've ever played in my whole life. It's the iRacing. I'm not saying that that game is best, but it has 
realistic outcomes and it has realistic racing on it. Like I can go right now on my, on my computer. I can go right now on my computer and hook up my wheel and play some eye racing. And I think, you know, after this um, Richmond, I think that's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to play some eye racing. After I have some breakfast, or after I have some lunch. Uh, you know, like I think I'm not, I'm not commentating today. I just don't feel like I'm commentating, you know, I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit more input on me and myself, you know, like, like the kind of things that I like to do, you know, and if I get a lot, like, if I get subscribers and everything, you know, I, I'm the type of person that, 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 you know, I'll, you know, I like, I don't know, I, I'm just the type of person that gets that, you know what I'm saying, like, if you subscribe, I'll subscribe, you know, I, you know, if you subscribe, I'll, I'll throw like a, a giveaway or something, I'm really big. That, that's just the type of person I am. You know, I like to, I, you know, like, I don't know. I guess you have to give 1,000 subscribers to, you know, get the super chat, you know, and, and, and actually get paid from YouTube. I mean, I'm a, I'm really, really small channel. Like, I'm really small. Like, like, you can't even find my channel on YouTube. That's how small I am. You know, I, I, I barely get, like, fucking 20-something views on my videos. You know, um, but that's why I hope that some of you guys can, can you know, watch my videos, even watch my stream, or, or come up, come up, you know, if you like racing, come, come, come up and chat with me, you know, um, tell me what you think about the game, you know, and, 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 and just, we can just talk about racing, because I love racing, I always love racing, ever since I was a little kid, I used to have a go-kart, and I used to race my friends on, on go-karts on, on, on the dirt track so it was like dirt racing you know and that's why I take you know racing very seriously other sports I really don't take that seriously but racing I really I do take very seriously it's my passion it's my it's my love I love racing I've always have I, I'll watch racing all day long and my girlfriend was like how can you watch this this is boring no it's exciting what are you talking about it's boring this is exciting that's how much i love racing and when i see a game kind of replicate racing and they do it in the wrong way yeah i'm going to have a problem with that As I say, Michael Madal, again, I'm spinning out. Nobody out there. As um, Daniel Suarez just, uh, he comes up and does a slide job on me. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. I mean, it happens in real life. I mean, this is what this game does sometimes. It just it's oh god it's it's comical sometimes i mean i don't i have no, I have no problem getting a tour of slide of slide diving on me i mean i have no problem with that it's just sometimes what the cpu does it's just it's just funny what this game does sometimes like wow like i don't know that it's, i mean like i said i have no problem with that it's just like wow as you see the licky he's in the lap of we got two laps, didn't we? No. Wow, I thought Balicki would... I don't know what happened to Balicki. Uh, I thought he would... I thought he would put him a couple laps down. I don't know. As he gets by me, and he put us two laps down. So what a good job by Josh Balicki. It looks like Josh Balicki had a really fast car up here in Richmond. Okay, guys, I don't really know much about Richmond. Um, I always thought... Like, I didn't even know it was in Virginia. I thought, um, I thought Richmond was in California, actually. You know, Richmond, California? That's what I thought Richmond was until I looked it up. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's in fuck, you know, because I didn't want to, you know, because I go, I go to the history with crap. And, um, I'm like, well, you know, before I do that, before I talk about it, 
you know, I don't want to get things incorrect. So I had to, you know, I didn't want to say Richmond, California. So I had to say, you know, Richmond, it's like Richmond, Virginia. So I'm like, okay, now I can sit there and go by the, uh, you know, the history of the track. Cause I know a lot, I mean, I don't know a lot about Richmond, but I do know like the, the like the history about it. Like the track when it, when it first opened and everything. Hard from the outside. And it's unique, deep-shaped uh, track, and um, a lot of a lot of drivers love Richmond. Uh, they, they realize they, they love driving here because of the, you can hit hot, you can hit, you can hit high speeds in this track. It's like a speedway track. Oh, Dylan, I'm sorry. Oh, lucky he saved that. Oh my God. Like I said, guys, I tried to do a high speed, and he was right there. And I, I kind of bumped into him, and he kind of, you know, it, it kind of like, his, his back rear end kind of like was right there, and I couldn't stop. Because sometimes it's hard to brake in, in stock cars, too, because you're so heavy. Like, you ever notice that when you brake, it, like, when you brake, it doesn't brake right away? Like, in real, like in real life, like, in, 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 like, a, like a, reg a regular car. Like, my Ford Mustang out there in my driveway, uh, uh, out there in my garage. I can take a spin on it right now. I can go out and take a spin, and it, it would it would actually um I don't know like like I can take a spin and, and go on the highway and, and kind of and, and then go on the street and, and, and brake and it'll brake right away. Stock cars are different. Stock cars are you really really have to um like I don't know they don't stop right away. It, it's just the way. I, oh, don't sit Dylan, Dylan. Oh gosh, Dylan! Oh, we did another caution. As we're two, as we're two laps down, guys. And I, I, I gotta say, guys, I did not mean to do that to um, Ty Dylan. As we're gonna actually take right sides. We're not gonna fix the damage. Yeah, we'll fix the damage because we're only we're only gonna take right sides. Like I said, guys, I did not mean to. J <laughs> this game. Um. I don't know what Ty Dillon was doing, but he went right, again, he went right underneath me. When he had no business of doing that. He went right underneath me, and uh, I don't know what he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to force me up the wall. I don't know what he was trying to do, but he, he absolutely uh, spun out. So, I don't know. Uh, th that's Ty Dillon's fault. That, that ain't my fault. As we stay neutral, but we're still two laps down. So, again, it, it, um... Again, um, it's maybe this, like I said guys, it's just the setup that I'm using. That's why I'm two laps down, it's the setup that I'm using. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to win every race, and I'm not trying to, um... Ooh, 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 ooh! Save it, Kenzie! Ooh! Did he try to cause an accident, actually? Can I test try to cause an accident with Denny Hamlin? You, you see, back, back Kenzie, he tried to cause an accident, and Chase Elliott just did a slide job, and then got loose and went right on the edge. You see Blaney? Uh, Blaney saved uh, Elliot. So what a great job by uh, Ryan Blaney uh, of, sa of, of saving Chase Elliot. Oh, we're just bumping right in the wall here. Oh my god. That's why I like Ryan Blaney in this game. Like some of these bots are... I'm really impressed with this game. And what I mean by that, guys, is that you see what happened with Chase Elliot, right? Chase Elliot had no business of even dive bombing and having god speed and trying to pass me like that. And he's just going to slide up and drift up because of the way of the track, how the track is made. But did you see what Ryan Blaney did, right? Ryan Blaney, um, he knew that Chase Elliott was spinning out. He had the awareness to, to know that Chase Elliott was going to spin out. And you see, he kind of went up there and he kind of like got Chase Elliott's way for him not to spin out. That's very classman by Ryan Blaney. And that's what I mean by some of these drivers. Like some of these drivers are very, very clean. Like, they won't even touch you. Like, Ryan Blaney, he, he doesn't even make contact with me. Like, he doesn't even try to make contact with me. Not like, um, I don't even think Kyle Busch does it, or even Kirk Busch. Just some drivers are very dirty in this game. Like, um, I know Chase Elliott's one of them. Like, he, like, uh, like, um, him and, um, I, I can't say Jimmy. There's been a couple times Jimmy Johnson has done that to me, too. Um, him and, um, what, what else driver in the game? Uh, Cliff Boyer, Cliff Boyer and Eric Alvarola, they are very, in this game, I don't know in real life, but I know in this game, they're very dirty drivers. Uh, very dirty. Um, I don't think Cole Custer is one. 
I don't even think John Hunter Nemechek uh, ever did that to me. I mean, he did that one time, but that was like a little bump on Atlanta when I kind of bumped him on accident. And he kind of, like, it was, it was sort of like a racing move and a racing bump. Like, hey, you know, you do that, I do that. So that's what it was kind of like that. But, um, I don't know. Some drivers in this game, they, they, did, they have different tendencies. You know, some of them have class acts, and some of them are really fucking dirty. Like, I know Clint Boyer, he's one of them in this game, and Eric Amarola, they are very dirty in this game, I don't like that. Like, they are very dirty. Um, I'm trying to think about it. Michael McDowell, he's one too. Um... Who else, uh... Chris Buescher is one too. Like right? really dirty. Ryan Priest. I, I don't. I don't know if he's dirty or not. I, he doesn't really try to make contact with me. Cause these are certain drivers that make contact. They constantly make contact with you and fuck you. It's the same drivers too. Like I was talking about yesterday about um, in Bristol. That um, you know, like that's the second time. And I don't even think Chase Elliott in real life is a dirty driver. I don't even think Chase Elliott is a dirty driver in real life. I think he's a very clean driver in real life. So I don't know what the developers are doing uh, when they do when they program the, the, the bots. I know they have different personality. I can tell that, that um, some of these AI drivers, they, they drive differently. Like Denny Hamlin, I don't think Denny Hamlin's ever made contact, tried to make contact with me. No, he hasn't. He's raced me very, very clean. Um, Eric Jones, Eric Jones is another one that's dirty in this game. He's a very dirty driver in this game. It's like the AI in this game, um, Eric Jones is a very dirty driver. Who is, is that, that, um, Good job by Ty Dillon over there. <laughs> Damn, we got 231 laps to go. There is 400 laps. It felt like this 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 race is dragging on. Don't it, guys? It feels like it's dragging on and on and on. Not so quick. Like Bristol had 500 laps, and we flew by that one. But this one is dragging on. as we do a slide job um, to um, to Ty Dillon. I don't know, Michael McDowell looks like he has a pretty good car. I don't know why he's in 31st place. Seems like he's got a pretty good car. So I thought he was going to spin out, but he went down the bottom lane. Which he never should have done. I mean, he should have stayed up top because the straightaway was coming. Okay, you see, you see what I'm talking about, guys, right? With the AI, they, they don't try to dive bomb all the time towards the bottom. You see what Amarillo did and Joey Gates and um, I think that's Ricky Tenhouse. You see how they're staying up high, right? They're not dive bombing towards the bottom. Again, it's just nice to prefer racing lines. They're not always predictable. See, that, that Joey Gates went to the bottom. You see, it, they just kind of switch it up. They switch up to the lines, which I really like. I really do like that. They're not so predictable. Like, you can't go down low and say, oh, you know, Joey Gates is going to go down there. You don't know Joey Gates is really going to go down there. So you, you're not really trying to die bomb in that in that corner right there. And Josh Felicity is going to lap us a third time. Oh, shit. I, did, I was looking at my um, car care. Trying to look at my car care. And that happened. Oh, and Foster came out. Yeah, he's going to put us uh, another lap down, guys. So it looks like they're all pitting here. Uh, damn, this race is dragging on and on and on. 
We gotta get up to 10th place. Uh, it looks like we're gonna fail our goal. Our season, our Ruddick's gonna fail his season goal of getting top 10s. Or trying to, trying to stay in the top 10. But we're gonna pit here. We're gonna fix the damage and we're gonna keep four tires. And we're gonna get 110. We're gonna get half a can of fuel because we wanna be on full can of fuel. I think if that caution would have came out, Josh Kalicki would have overlapped uh, lapped us again. As the green flag back in the air here at Richmond, Virginia. We're gonna, we're gonna, it's still early, it's still early, we're trying to get our lap back. Try to get one lap back, please. You can't go out like that. This was a top 20, I don't know how long that's gonna last. With this setup, I don't know how long that's gonna last, guys. We were in top 20. Yeah, I think we just super. Well, oh, we're not really losing spots, but that would need spots and stuff. Christopher Bell did a slide job there. I, I really like the AI and their slide jobs, what they do, how they slide up. You know, I just really like what they do. I, I don't know. It's just, I think it's good racing, what they do. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I had a really break on that one because I was, um, I was, again, I'm respecting Chris Butcher's position. I'm respecting his position. Somebody told me, um, somebody told me that if I feel, um, do, do my hands hurt, um, when I play with the controller? Like, when I play with the controller, and not my wheel in this game, like, somebody says, like, you do a lot of laps, like, does your hands hurt? And no, they don't. They don't really hurt. Oh, no, 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 Amber! No! Oh my god, thank god. Oh god. I don't want another caution to come out. Like, I... Okay, guys, th that's not me. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just this game. This game does that a lot, especially on short track. I don't mind it. Ooh. I don't mind it, but it's just a simple fact of, hey, you know, like, I don't know. It's just like more of, you know, like, I'm not doing it on purpose, it's just, this, this, this game does things like that. That's the only thing I hate about it. Like I said, there's some things I like about it, and there's some things I don't like about it. Like, when it does stuff like that, like, it's just... And I'm just getting burned off these restarts, like... I am really, really getting burned off restarts. Yeah, this setup, this setup is not good for this track. I'm losing, like, oh, I'm new, I'm, I'm, I'm not gaining any RPM. I'm just staying neutral. I'm slow. Which is like, like, like I said, I don't, I'm not complaining. I wanted a tighter setup. I wanted to experiment with the setups and how the track is. So I'm not complaining about it. The things that, uh, you know, I'm just saying that it, it's not made, this, this, this setup is not made for this track. It's, I feel like I'm really, really slow in turning, and I really have to slow down when I'm turning. I like how Emerola saved his car, too.
Like guys, you notice my gameplay, right? And you notice how I'm driving, and I drive very professionally and cleanly. Even though I do make contact with the AI, but I I don't need to, guys. It's just the way how this game is built. That with the contact, so it's not me that's doing that. It's just the momentum of the car, and I'm I'm really slamming on my brakes, and there's just nothing. The car still hits the AI. I don't know why. There's sometimes it doesn't. There's sometimes it does. It's just like it doesn't really input my braking, which is kind of realistically because I mean. Stock car, like I said guys, stock car, stock cars are heavy, and if you brake, it's not instantly going to brake for you, it's not instantly going to stop for you, it's going to kind of like, it's called drag braking, you know what I'm saying, like it's kind of drag braking, like, you're not always going to stop right away, because of the stock car, the, car, the, the cars are heavy, so you're not always going to um, have that, like I see I plan on the brakes on Joey Gates, because, Again, I wanted to respect his position. And again, he respects my position. As I do a slide job underneath him. Maybe I'm just playing the track wrong, because I noticed that when I hit that corner, when I when I hit that, I went instantly down, and I hugged the bottom line, and I did not lose that much RPM, so maybe it's, again guys, I'm, I'm not, I didn't play this track, so again, I'm very unfamiliar with the track, and that's kind of why I'm struggling with it right now, I'm just trying to feel things out with the track. Like I said, I'm new to, I'm new to the, the heat game, so I, I mean, the, the heat, that's why he, I'm new to it, so I mean, I don't really know about the tracks and the turns. Like on this green light, you see that green light right there? I usually let off the gas. There's certain signs and there's certain things in racing that you need to understand. Like there's a certain wall or a sign. They're just braking indicators to know, hey, you need to slow down. So if you memorize that as a driver, like, like this screen light right here, break, so you're going to be able to hit that corner, it's just a memory to know when to break, you know, because, again, you know, you don't have a racing line, and what I mean by a racing line is like, you know in, pra you know in this game, you have practice, right, they give you that green line, and then they show the red line where you know you need a break, that's for like, immature racers, like, th that's for people that doesn't race, they don't know about racing, like, you know, I don't want a racing line. I don't want the game to tell me, hey, this is the, this, you need to go up high here, you need to go low. You need to make your own racing line because some, those racing lines that the developers do, they're just racing lines to, you don't have to follow them. You can make your own racing line. Like, you know, it's just, they're just racing lines to benefit like an immediate racer, like a, somebody that's not very really custom to racing, they're new to racing. That's what racing lines are, they're like for moves. So you can make your own racing line. Like, go high, go low. Like this, not this light, but this light right here. It's an indicator for me to break. You know, like, uh, to break. Or the wall right here. Or, you know, anything, any sign that's on the track. It's an indicator for you to slow down and break so you'll be able to hit the corner so you won't oversteer or understeer and bump into walls. Like right now, my car is very, I'm suffering right now from the understeer of the car. It's very tight. It's like a front wheel, it's like a four wheel drive car. Very, very tight in the understeer. There's understeer and oversteer. Understeer is when you're tight when you can't turn very good and very, you know, very, you can't turn very good. Oversteering is when you're loose. You're oversteering the car. You're pushing the car to the limit. That's oversteer. You're loosening up the car to be faster, but you're not going to be that precise on control and stability. That's what oversteer is. And I just think a tighter setup in Richmond did good. I should have put, put a looser setup. 
because I think this track is made for looser setup. So I should have picked a looser setup. Like again, guys, but I like to experiment with different setups in this game because again, setups have a lot to do with track randomness, with how you pick the track, like the, what kind of track you are racing in. The game will determine what setup you the, what setup that are you, what setup you are what car setup you are using. And then they'll go with the track randomness to match the setup that you're using. That's how this game works. And if anybody has a problem with that, they can comment me and let me know anything different. But you're not going to tell me anything differently because that's how this game is made. A lot of it has to do with your car setup and the um, track randomness of the track. As you see, I'm not. I'm not spinning out. My car doesn't feel snappy like it did in uh, Texas or it did in Bristol. Even though I did kind of run a tight setup in Bristol, but not that type of setup, you know. And actually, we're gonna loosen up the car a little bit. We're gonna drop the we're gonna drop the wedge down one one round of wedge just to get the car a little free up. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna drop that tape. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna leave the tape alone. Because tape is more for like, like um, like speed and stability a little bit. But we're gonna free up the car a little bit because yeah, I am suffering definitely right now. I am suffering from under steering a lot. I'm fighting the car to turn. It does not want to turn. That's why I have to brake on these corners so slow because of the car not turning it's very understeer it doesn't fit the track and again this track the game knows that that i picked the setup so they're going to have the understeer which is very realistically that's why i say that these setups these setups that you pick and use even a custom setup the game will know that you're using a custom setup and they'll benefit they'll um benefit your car from the track randomness the track random the track has a lot to do with your car setup and the car setup has a lot to do with these tracks see how i'm understeering like i can't turn that's track randomness and very realistically track randomness if you have a tight setup, you're not supposed to turn freely. You're supposed to understeer. And that's what I'm suffering from, from understeering. I'm not being able to turn very precisely, or I mean, not very quickly. Like, I really have to, like, like, go really slow to help that bottom line. Like right there, see how it drifts up? I can't hug that line precisely because of the understeer. Again, and I can already tell that this game, the setup that I'm using has has soft springs again on it. All clear. It doesn't have hard springs. And really, the car feels a lot heavy. Like, I bet you there's a lot of weight on the car. Um, if I go into the default, I wish you could look at the default. I don't know if you go into the custom setup I, I, and, and you look at it and you, wait, as you try to do it, and that's the default setup. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure, because the car feels so heavy right now, guys. And, and it's, I, I, it's just, I don't know. But there's no rotation. See, I mean, look at that. There's no rotation to the car. It's like what I was feeling like in Auto Club when I said I couldn't turn and I made a storyline out of it. That's what it feels like. Oh, Clint! Clint, save it! Nice job, Eric! I love Eric Jones how he did that. Right side. All clear, all clear, no pressure from behind. You 
see what I'm saying guys with my gameplay? You see how I'm racing the AI? It's smart fundamental racing. Me and Eric Jones were side by side. No contact. On a turn. That's fun. That's smart racing. That's fundamentally racing. You don't always have to make contact with your with your opponent. You have to respect his position. Again, like I said, if you think this is boring, then you're not a, you, you don't know anything about racing. Nothing about racing. Oh, I'm gonna get mad because the AI is, is overlapping me two times. No, it's realistically, it's the, it's the setup that I'm using. He has a better setup than I do. He matches his setup towards the track. So why am I gonna have a problem with that? Yeah, it looks like he, you know, it looks like Josh Malicki's car, his, his car setup, it, it, it benefits, the track is benefiting, you know, like his car is benefiting from the track, from the track, which is real life, it's realistic. I have a more tighter setup. A lot, actually, because I put it on the, I believe I put it on the, on the, um, like um, the, the, the 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 tightest it can go. <laughs> so you know. Oh, and Chad saved it. Thank God, Chad saved it. As he draft, trying to get side draft William. I think we play Richmond one more time. Yeah, we play Richmond one more time in the playoffs. So I have another chance to win at Richmond. I do want to win here, but like I said, guys, I just wasn't too familiar with the track, and I really didn't know about the track that that like I didn't like I didn't practice in the game. I, I didn't really know about the track. I just got up and exercised and ate some breakfast and um, turned on the game and started recording. Actually, I actually might do another one. I might do another one of um. NASCAR. I'm gonna put another video of NASCAR Heat 5. Like I said, guys, I mean, there's some things I like about it, and there's some things I don't. And, and hopefully, the, de the developers can, can can fix some of this stuff when 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 the um, next gen comes out. And build off of this, I just think they need a new engine. I, you know, I just think they need a, a whole new foundation to this game. You know, keep the AI like they are to kind of fix their, their flaws and build from that. Because this, this AI is one of the greatest... I mean, it's not, they're not the greatest AI I've ever played in a racing game, but they have smart, fundamentally racing on, on with the AI. The AI is a class act in some, like I said, in some tracks, in some tracks that are unplayable. The contact, like in Bristol and in Texas, they were unplayable. But right now, it's, it's just a class act. Look at it. Look at the racing out here. It's smart, fundamentally racing. Now, if I were to spin them out, yeah, they're, they're going to... It's not going to be fun. You're constantly going to make contact with them, yeah. I mean, see what Matt Kenseth did. Matt Kenseth stand on his brake. Why did he do that? He respected Timmy Hill's position. He didn't try to force... Um, and, and, and slam into Timmy Hill's back bumper. That is smart racing. He is respecting Timmy Hill's position. And again, this is World of Four difficulty. You see how it was... Like, I don't know, I, was, I felt like I was like dominant in Bristol and now like I'm struggling here in Richmond. It's gonna happen. It's like real life, it's gonna happen. Again, it's the setup that you're using. Now, I'm pretty sure if I had a setup like Josh Malicki, 
you know, if I would have had, if I would have figured out the slider and, and matched the slider to the track, I'm pretty sure I would have a lot of success in being the top ten. And that's probably why I'm getting a lot of top five and not really, you know, I'm not really DNFing because, you know, like, I'm a smart driver. And I don't, I don't intend to crash and bump into the AI. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't drive recklessly. I drive very, very intelligently and very smart. That's why I don't DNF. But again, when, when you DNF, it's not, it, I, I see some of the AI do it too. Like, they're intentionally, like, bumping into a wall, and then you DNF. Depending on how fast you're going. But, I, I see some of these guys that play this game, and they'll DNF, and they'll say, Oh, they're doing another fucking DNF, or something like that. But I see the way how their setup is, and I'm like, dude, you're using a fucking loose setup. And you're crashing into walls. Of course you're going to DNF. Like, you're not benefiting. Your car setup is not made for the track. The track is not, your car is not benefiting from your setup, from the track. So why are you complaining when you made the setup yourself? You made the setup yourself. You have nobody to blame but yourself. Your setup was wrong for the track, and that's where the track randomness happens. So to spin you out on purpose because of your setup. You see how I'm not spinning out, right? You see how there's not a snappiness to my car because of the track randomness, because of the type of setup that I'm using, the car setup. It's very, very tight. The only problem with it is, is that on a tight setup, you can't turn. You're not going to be hugging lines precisely. You're going to be drifting up. And that can hurt you in the long run. Depending on the track. See, like that. I don't like how I did that. Dad. And I don't really like how this game replicated that. I don't like how I kind of like put, got on a uh, Martin Truex's uh, back rear. And was able to keep stride for stride with him on that. Even though I was on the back panel trying to like get, get back from him. That's bullshit. You should, I, that's why I let him go. Because, like I said, guys, it's an accident waiting to happen. It's an accident waiting to happen. you got to be smart on what this game is trying to replicate, what this game is trying to do. Like I said, they do, the developers did a great job. I'm not saying they did a bad job on the game. They did a great job on here. I love the AI. Just on some tracks that are unplayable. And the, and the car setup that you use, and the track randomness of the car setup. You just don't get loose on a tight setup, and, and you don't feel, not unless your cars are, I mean not cars, not unless your tires are very worn out. So, if my, car, like my tires are kind of getting bald, then yeah, I am going to spin out. Excuse me, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Why? No, you can use any. You can use any game for it. Yeah, you can use any game for it. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, guys, I'm back. But um, as I said, uh, as my tires were getting um, bald. Yeah. So again, you see that I spun out, right, and I hit the wall, but I didn't really hit it forcefully. I didn't really hit it with a with a high impact, and that's why I did not DNF. Sure, let's look at this. Google, Google for tires. Hopefully, that, yeah, I did. I did put it. I lost three spots. I'm three laps down. But you see what I'm saying, guys, right? Like, like um, you know, like. I, the only reason why I didn't DNF uh, is because I wasn't going that fast and it simulates real, like it kind of simulated that. If you're going like, like right now I'm going pretty fast, right? If I intentionally, like, like if I intentionally hit that wall on full impact, you're going to DNF. Your car is going to take massive damage and, and that's a DNF. But if that was like a minor scratch, like that, 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 even though it was 22, I think it was like 15 damage, or 15 seconds for the damage, it wasn't that significant, like it, the game didn't register like, yeah, it's just a scratch. I mean, yeah, you're gonna hit the wall, but I got it on full damage. 
So, yeah, you know, it's not really that bad of damage to DNF. Now, if I really did get DNF, I, I, I don't know. I don't think I'd be mad. I just, I don't know. I just don't think it was that much damage to, de to get DNF. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, guys, like, if you run a lot of laps like I do, it's kind of a downer when you DNF because all that work that you just did was for nothing. So all the laps that you did run before was pretty much for nothing. So you, you didn't get any points and you, it's like it never happened. So, I mean, like I said, guys, is it really worth, like, if you play a lot of laps, like me, is it really worth to have DNF on? If you, if you play like me, if you play like the full laps, I'm not saying half of the laps or anything. If you play like me, is it really worth to have that, like, enabled or disabled? I mean, we, you know, I mean, I, I like it because it, it just, you know, it, it teaches, you know, even though I, I know how to, how to, I even though I know how to race, I know how to race, like, um, um, very clearly and very, very intelligently, but when you have DNF on, it makes you race, it makes you race more carefully because you don't want to DNF. And that's what I think the developers were, were going with DNF in this game, but they kind of overdid it. A simple bump. Ooh, ooh, I'm sorry, Reagan. Got one inside. Are there on save the it, side? save it. There you go. A certain D and F can hurt your chances. It can ruin your day. You know, like, like, um, I don't know. I can't really explain it. I can't really explain it, guys. Like, like I say, guys, if you want like a lot of laps like I do, then a, a, a D and F. Oh, look at Matthew Benedetto. Matthew Benedetto in the first place over Josh Kalicki. Fell out of that first spot. So we'll see if he can rebound. But anyways, guys, like, um, and, and Matthew Benedetto showing that Brother Woods, showing that, that Brother Woods car, it, 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 it got, it's got that speed again. It's got that speed. So, okay, guys, the only reason why I'm hitting the wall here is because, again, um, um, the, the setup that I'm using, you know, I'm under -steering. I'm fighting my car to drive, uh, to steer, because it's the understeer. Now, I'm going to say this one more time. It has to deal with your car setup and the, the track randomly to that setup. That's how I think tracks work in this game. It goes by your car setup, the, the kind of car setup that you use. That's how the game determines um, the track. Cause they don't have like they don't have track temperature in this game like they don't have track temperature or any kind of simulation stuff like that with the track so again that's why i said it's track randomness the car setup that you use that's what makes spin you out that uh, that as you're getting slower and slower that's what spins you out that's why you're bumping in the walls because of the, the camber the setup the spring the suspension that you're using the weight of the car you really have to get those things right for you to have a, a good car. And that's why I think custom setups are kind of overpowered when you go into facing the, the, the computer. If you have an advantage over them because it's, you are benefiting you, the, 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 the track, your car is... How can I say that? Your car is benefiting from the track randomness. You're not going to have that much track randomness because of your car setup. You see what I'm saying? Like you, you, ever, you ever notice that when you use a tight setup or a loose setup that they're different with the track? You ever notice that? In this game? Like if I had a loose setup, like I went up that apron right there, right? My left front tire went up that apron, right? On that turn right there. On a loose setup, I guarantee I would have spun out because of the track randomness, because of the car setup. I got a tight setup, so it's the, the track, it didn't hurt me because I had a tight setup. Even though I think you still can't go on there and spin out on a tight setup. But it wasn't that significant that the game registered it. You see what I'm saying, guys? Like, I think that's what I think this game does. This game has, it doesn't have track temperature, or it doesn't have any kind of simulation to the track. Like, it doesn't go by real life. So it has some kind of, it has to do with... You have to spin out, right? You have to hit a wall every once in a while, right? 
That's how it is in real NASCAR. So it goes by your car setup. What kind of setup that you're using on your car, and then the, the game will register that, and it will go off the track, and it will start to benefit you or this, or 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 you won't benefit from the track because of the track randomness to the setup that you use. Just like in real life. If you, I mean, if you use a really loose setup on fucking watch uh, on a road course, yeah, you're gonna fucking you're gonna spin out. You're gonna spin out in real life if you really lose a loose setup. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I don't know, but I know you have, it has some kind of impact on the track. That's why they really go by track temperature now in the game, the weather of the of of the day, whether it's day or night. And they'll go by the track, the track temperature. And then they'll, they'll, they'll tune their car up to how the track is. Like I, like, I was watching some other guy, and he was talking about, in real life, like, um, I don't know, I don't know who it was. I think it was, like, Henry Motorsports. Um, I don't know if it was Chase Elliott or, like, uh, Jimmy Johnson or, or um, Alex Bowman or William Byron. But I, I don't know. I guess somebody said that, um... One of the pit crew uh, played heat game. This this heat this heat game right here, and um, he had a certain um, he had a certain success on um, a track by using a custom setup. He used a custom setup on this game, and he had a certain um, advantage on the track. So he kind of like said, "Wow, you know, we're, we're going to that track. I should I should tune up that I should tune up the car." to, um, you know, like, 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 like in the game, like the setup that he had in the game, he said, I should, I should tune my car up to, um, and like that in real life. Now, again, guys, I don't know if that's real life. I mean, I don't know if that's true. I was just watching some guy's channel and he said that. So, I don't know how true that is. I'm not trying to say something that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to, that's why I'm trying to, I, that's why I always say I watch some guy's channel, because I do. I watched his channel and that's what he said. So I don't know. I'm just going by what his what he said. I'm going by what his opinion is. So, but anyways, he said that um, he tuned the car like he did a car setup. He tuned the car for that track like it was in the game, and it didn't work in real life. Like the car absolutely was shit and. And, yeah, it, it just didn't work out. And I don't know how true that is, because I don't know. I mean, that seems, like, unrealistic. Like, why, why would anybody um, try to take a virtual video game and, and a virtual setup and try to make it, like, real life? You're not, it's not going to work. It's a virtual video game. You know? This, these tracks don't have track temperature. They don't have realistic track. I mean, they don't have realistic uh, outcomes to the track. So, again, they go by your car setup. This game goes by your car setup. What kind of setup are you using? And then it, it, it just, you have some kind of advantage, and then you have disadvantages to the track, of how the track is with your car setup. So why would a professional pit crew guy, um, why would he, um, take a setup from here and try to use it in real life. He would get fired if he did that in real life. And that's what I'm talking about. And if he did really do that, he's a dumbass for even doing that. And he should, he should lose his job because he has no brain cells. You see what I'm saying? He has no fucking brain if he's gonna use a setup from a, a racing game I'm fucking real life. Like, that, what? What are you doing? These setups are not for real life. These setups are to match the track randomness. The track randomness of this game. That's what these setups are for. That to, to negate the track randomness and to fit the track. Because this, this game doesn't. It's not like real life. It doesn't have track temperature. It doesn't have, you know. Um, 
the night effect. Or I don't know. It just doesn't have track temperature. I know that. It just has a lot of randomness to it. Like when I said about Texas, when I was using a balance set up there, I had it in the middle, and it felt like I want, they wanted to pull me into pit road. It felt like it, there was an ice patch down there. It all has to do with your setup that you're using. Like right now, the game wants to drift me up near that wall. I'm going slow as shit, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm really going slow as shit. And it still wants to drift me up the wall. It's because, again, the track randomness. Why is it happening? Why is the track randomness affecting it? Because I have a really tight setup. And it's the track randomness. Again, if you're going, if your tires are going bald, you're going to spin out despite you being tight. Because why it's trying to replicate track randomness. Not only track randomness, but the wear of your tires. You see what I'm saying? The only reason why it spun out is because, well, one thing I had to itch my nose. <laughs> and the other thing is that, um, yeah, my, my tires were getting bald. My tires were wearing out. I should have went to the pit. But I thought they would last a little longer. You see what I'm saying, guys, with the, what I'm trying to say with the setup? I'm not trying to say that custom setups are garbage, because they're not. They're not, they're not garbage in this game. They're, they're just able to tune your car to match the track. Randomness. So you will have... Um, so you just have a better time with the track, I guess. I mean, I don't know, but I know this game has a lot of track randomness, and it has a lot, of, has a lot to do with your car setup. I know that for a fact. Because, again, you know, I looked it up. This game doesn't have track temperature, like in real life. Like, you know, uh, like when I talked about my last video in Bristol, you know, uh, you don't tune your car to have an advantage over your opponent as Blaney trying to cross this up and didn't do it. So what a great job by Tyler of blocking that bottom lane. But anyways, yeah, uh, you know, guys, like, well, what I'm trying to say is that this game doesn't have track temperature. It doesn't, I don't even, I don't know. I don't know if it, I think it has dirty air effect. I, sometimes I feel, sometimes I don't. Like I said, there's a lot of randomness to it. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I feel like I'm in dirty air and sometimes I feel like I'm not. You know, when I'm behind a car. I should be in dirty air right now. Oh, not right now, but yeah, just, you know, like, yeah, right now, I mean, I should be in dirty air because of just how it is. You see what I'm saying, guys? I mean, I don't know, man. It's just, that's what I think. You know, I think this game has just a lot of randomness to it. It all has to do with your setup, and I just think that's kind of, like, not good in a way. Because it seems it's... What I mean by that is like, you have to, um, you have to use a certain car setup to be successful, to, to negate some of the, to, to the randomness of the track. And if you use a setup too much and it is overpowered uh, on a track, then you're not going to use another setup. You're just not going to use that setup because, you know, if it's broke, don't fix it, right? So, and then you get bored with it, like you get bored with the game, because it's not giving you much of a challenge, even though it's on max difficulty, because you have an advantage, like I said in my last video, you have an advantage when you're using custom setup, because they are benefiting, the game is benefiting you, because you are negating the track randomness, you see what I'm saying, you are negating that, because of your car setup, that's why I don't plan on default setup. If I had a D, if I had used a custom setup and I took my car to the track, oh, you best believe I'll be in first place. I'll have a huge lead right now, but I don't. Why? Keep everything balanced. The AI doesn't have a custom setup. They use default setup. I know that for a fact. They don't use default setup. I mean, they don't use custom setup. They use default setup. That's why you're able to blow by them on a custom setup. If they had a custom setup just like you, you best believe they'll be right on your ass and they'll be right back to sky with you. Just like in real life. But again, custom setups are not for beating your opponent. They are, um, they, they do it to 
I'm gonna put the track. How many turns the track has? It, it, was, it was a big turn. Like, like, like Richmond. Like, okay, like I'm in Richmond, right? <laughs> I don't know, guys. Like, okay, Richmond is different from Bristol. Bristol is different from Richmond. Richmond is different from Darlington. You're not going to use the same setup for Darlington in real life. You see what I'm saying? They 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 they, they tune the car. In real life, they, 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 they tune the car for the, 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 the track they're going to race. So, I mean, it's like having an advantage, I guess. I mean, but it's not having an advantage over your opponent. I mean, I guess you can fuck with the gears or whatever. And, you know, like the gears, like the gear, the gear ratio. But that's just, again, that's just like, again, to handle track randomness. Like, okay, like, I'm going like, I'm not even going the top speed of what the car is offering. Um, because as you see, I'm not really hitting that red line. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not really hitting the red line. Because, again, I have to break. So I'm not really getting the good, uh, the top speed that the car can handle. You see that? Like, I have to break, like, right here. And it, it, it's just, it, before it gets to the red thermometer, the red limit. That's what gear shifts are for. If, like, you, you, you fuck with the gear shifts in this game, um, in the transmission. That's all they're for. I mean, I fuck with them all the time in, um, Gran Turismo. And in Project Cars. Some of the, I noticed that, uh, some of the tracks on here, um, the, the transmission doesn't match the track. The, the gear shifts on the default setup, sometimes they don't match up with the track. And that's what custom setups are for. So you can go in them and change the, trans the gears on the transmission to match the corners. Uh, to get the top speed that you need, um, so you need to hit that corner and brake. You see, you see right now, right? I'm not using the top speed that the, the, the car is offering. I can go faster, but I have to brake. Because of the corners. Because of how the gears are. The gears are a lot more longer, which I don't know why on Richmond is a very short track. You should have like short, uh, uh, you should, your ratio should not be that long for the gears, I think. Because of how short the track is. But I'm losing RPM, and I'm not hitting the top RPM because of the way how the, 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 the setup is. Again, it benefits you, and then it disbenefits you. That's why I'm two laps down because of the setup that I'm using. It's not because of my skill, or it's not because I suck, or it's not because, you know, um, um, you know, I don't have enough horsepower, but I do have horsepower. It's because of the setup that I'm using. I'm not able to use my top speed because the game is, is um, um, the track is disadvantaged, or, or it's like giving you a penalty or something. Like, you're not being able to use your top speed because of the, of the setup that you're using of the way how the gears are, the transmission. You see, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even above my, uh, the, I'm not even hitting the red line. And sometimes on other tracks, it's just, it, it feels like the gears are, um, are, um, too fast. Like, you, you hit the red line before the turn even comes. In this game. Like, I know on Watt, uh, I think it's Watt and Guns, or Watt, I can't say that guy. I'm gonna say, you know, I'm gonna say at the Glen, okay? Um, that long, long, that long back stretch or whatever, um, like before you get to the chicane, before you get to the bus stop, I just feel like the game on the default setup, if you're hitting that red limit, like you're hitting that red line way too fast, then, then the turn is coming up. You always want to match your gears and hit top speed before the turn comes. You see what I'm saying? And we really want to hit, like right here, on the straightaway, we really want to hit top speed with the, with the, with the uh, car's offering, and then brake. Because you won't lose low speed. But again, it's how the track is made, and it's how the developers put it on the default setup. Again, I lost a lot of RPMs. I don't know how, 
uh, Chastain didn't pass me. He should have passed me with ease. Because I was going fucking 40. I don't know. I was going slow as shit. He should have passed me. So you see what I'm saying, guys, right? These setups are a lot to do with track randomness. And how it benefits you on the track. They have to deal with understeer, oversteer, springs, suspensions, weight of the car, the camber, you know, even the gear shift. The anti robot, whatever. Whatever that you're doing, this game will know what you're doing and they'll, they'll, they'll have some kind of advantage for you or disadvantage on the track. And it's good balance. It's good balance, but then it can break that balance because you could be so overpowered because you feel you, you will absolutely find a, a overpowered setup because the, the setup matches the track so well. See what I'm saying? And then it becomes repetitive and boring because you don't want to lose. You don't want to, uh, you know, use no other setup but that setup. And it's not like that in real life, actually. Just because you win at Daytona, and, you, and somebody wins that Daytona in real life, you think they're going to use that same setup? No, they're not. They're not going to use the same setup. They go by real life. Real attributes of racing. Real track temperatures. All right, clear outside. You see Austin Dillon, when he won the, 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 the Coke, uh, I think it was the Coke 400, I'm pretty sure he had a good setup. But you think that he, you think that the success that he had, he would have won in, he would have kept winning Daytona because of the setup. It's not like that in real life. Not like this game where you can keep using the same setup because of the track randomness. In real life, they don't have any track randomness. They go by real racing fundamentals, not fundamentals, but uh, metrics and track temperatures and all that. That's why, I mean, It'll be, it'll be clearly overpowered if, you use, if somebody uses the same setup, like Austin Dillon in real life uses the same setup that he used to win the Coca-Cola 400 that year in Daytona. You would think that he would keep using that same setup, but he didn't. Why? Because that setup was made for that track temperature that day or that night. You see what I'm saying, guys? Where in this game, it just has track randomness to the setup. So you can keep using that same setup and it'll keep working. You see what I'm saying now? I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be uh, as realistic and as awful as possible, guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I mean, look at, I'm not even using my my car's top speed. That it's awfully, and it's because of the setup that I'm using. These gears are too long. The gears, uh, the transmission gears are too long. It's called gear ratio. You always want to hit top speed when that corner comes so you can get off the throttle and be able to turn and then get back right back on the throttle and use the top speed again. Like right now, yeah, see I can't even hit the red denominator, even if I wanted to, I'll, I'll be hitting that wall at top speed because of the, again, guys, because of the tight setup, because of the setup. The track is, I'm getting track randomness. I can't hit my top speed because of the track randomness and how the setup is. The setup is not made for this track. That's why they have a slider for the default. To be able to have to be able to so you can mess around with the slider say hmm this setup works on this type of track you're trying to negate the randomness to the track you see how i had top speed a little bit there and i i was able to pass for Ricky and gong but that's because their tire wear is wearing down too a little bit has to do with the tire wear that they got it their, their tire wear is wearing down just like mine is. Look at, look at my tire wear. It's wearing out. Just like theirs are. It's balanced. And sometimes in some sort of track, it is balanced. But in some sort of track, I just think that you have 
that the AI has an advantage. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I mean, that's how it is. In some kind of track, you have an advantage in the AI does, whether it's with fuel or tire wear. That's why they're able to stay out there. Oh, ooh, 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 as oh, true as oh my God! He got right. I'm bringing his ass and kind of rolled him up that wall. I, I don't know, guys. I guess that is right. I mean, I I guess a true Rex did try to run Blaney up the wall. So I guess I mean I guess it happens with the AI. I don't know, guys. I, like I said, I mean I see stuff in this game with the AI does to each other, and I'm like, wow, that, you know, that happens to me. So I don't know, guys. I mean. I, like I said, post a comment if you think guys think that that's true. I don't think he did try to run up the wall. I just think he bumped him. But it, but on, on on my on my screen, it looked like it was a pretty forceful impact. But I'm actually gonna do a manual pick for well, how many laps am I down? Three. I'm three laps down, guys. I'm three laps down. 104 difficulty. Not because of my skill, because I've been winning a lot of races. I, I, all, you can check all my videos, I've been in all the top five. It's because of the setup. The setup that I'm using is the wrong setup for this track because of the randomness and the understeer. I got an understeer. Now I'm pretty sure if I, like I said, I'm pretty sure if I would have used a custom setup, I would have been, I would have, I, I probably would have done a lot more, you know, I would have been a lot more successful. And that's what I'll do probably in the playoffs, and, and when I go into the playoffs in Richmond, I'll probably they use run. a different setup for Richmond. Right by there. You know, because if I use the same setup as this, it's going to be the same result. Because again, this track doesn't have track right temperature. It doesn't have racing real track um racing um metrics in it that has just track randomness so you gotta find that right setup to have success on a track on this game and you can be able to use that setup all the time which is unrealistic i'm gonna say it again it's unrealistic I'm not trying to bash the game for its custom setups, I'm just saying, that's why I say, that's probably why I said that custom setups are trash in this game, they're not really trash, but they're trash in a way, because they always work, you can find that good, 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 good setup, and never look back, because of the track randomness, you're negating the track randomness, of the track, of the turns, you are benefiting, the track, you are benefiting, you are benefiting, you are benefiting, your car is benefiting from the track, the turns, you have been able to turn with ease, great rotation, all that. You're not going to look at another setup because you're always going to win. And it becomes repetitive and boring. That's why I say that they're garbage. They're not fun to use. You have an advantage over the AI. Now, if you use custom setups and you still lose like this, then I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what your problem is. Because look, I mean, I'm doing good as hell. I'm 104 difficulty. I'm not at 105, but I can win at 105. It's easy at 105. I just don't think that it's... 105, I don't think that it has a good mixture of racing, like a 104. 104 is like the, like the sweet spot. To this game. And I'll keep continuing to say it. And plus, I race realistically. I don't, I don't fucking race like it's arcade -ish. I respect the, the I respect the CPU's uh, position. Like I'm, like I'm, am I mad because I'm three laps down? No, I'm not mad. Why would I get mad? Anybody could win. It's smart, balanced racing. That was the first time I actually hit the red, the red, uh, the red, uh, limiter. The red, uh, the red, oh, that red, that red line on your, uh, the That's the first time I hit it. 
I really didn't even hit it either. I was like coming close to hitting it. But you know what I'm saying, guys? I mean, you see, you see, you see the, you see the nice racing that's on there, right? And you see my other video with Texas and Bristol. I had a hard time with the AI. Like, like the AI is not bumping me. They're not. There's been a few times, but they're not constantly bumping me. Actually, I'm going to go into the pits here. Oh, right, I think. Yeah, we got the black flag. So I'm going to be like more laps down. Uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, a couple of laps down because I put it on green. Okay, we're going to take uh, one half can of fuel, four tires, and we are going to actually fix the damage. Oh yeah, oh, I don't have to press X because it's not. But you see what I'm saying, guys, right? Oh, a caution came out. So maybe this will better put me. I think I'm four laps down. Am I four laps down? Yeah, I'm four laps down. I just gotta fix my damage here. Man, that right front was burning out. I'm not gonna pick. Why, 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 why pick? I'm not gonna pick. Okay, so I got the wave around, and I got I'm down three laps. Have a good day. Stay sharp. I'll try to have a good day, Tony Stewart. And again, I had the I had the CPU's tires on um normal, so that probably has a big difference why of their lapping me because their tires are not wearing down that much because of the setting that I have it on. And um, they do seem, I don't think they're faster, I think they're average, I think they're balanced in this enrichment. And I don't feel like they have an advantage over me, I don't feel like I have an advantage over them. So, you know, I don't know guys, it's just about, like I said, I, I, just, I just think this game has a lot to do with, your, with the car setup. And, 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 and if it benefits you from the track. Got a car coming on now. Like the like the track randomness, like if it the gate I think that's got, I have a lot to do with it. As we just ran our uh, fastest lap of the of the uh stage here. Well our, it's been our previous uh, lap that we just ran at here. As Brendan Gaughan's up here in thirty fourth place he's picking up dirty air and making me slow. I gotta get past Brendan Gaughan here. Try to get past him right here. Yep. Yep, I do it. Nice job by me. I'm trying to burn him on the straightaway. Burn him easily by on the straightaway. See if I can get past him. I, I, I want to get past uh, Kurt Busch here. I want to get past this whole cluster of cars right here. This is just so fast right now. So I luckily look, look. Man, I'm just not getting no speed on that straightaway. Like I'm not getting no speed on that straightaway, man. Again, we just ran our fastest lap uh, to the previous one. Oh, he just it up. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god, Michael. Oh my god. Oh my god, Tyler. Is that you, honey? Oh God, Tyler! Would you, would you, uh, would you put me a soda pop up, baby? Put me a Mountain Dew. Oh God, Tyler! Give me, uh, give me another cup of coffee, honey. Come on, Tyler, hug that corner. There we go. 
to my tower. Okay. Let me get on this straightaway, honey. Let me get on this straightaway real quick. Okay, babe. Bye -bye. I'm sorry about that, guys. I had to get my coffee, coffee cup to my fiance. Oh God, Tyler. That was a tight, tight spot right there. Oh God. Let it slow down to this corner. Woo, I don't know how I did that, guys. Joey Gates shows class and that tries to, you know, not respect my position and tries to go underneath me. He shows class and backs away. What a great job by Joey Gates of showing great sportsmanship. That's spot Joey here. I think he's going to get right underneath me. I'm going to let Joey go here. Give him the bottom lane. Try to burn him off the straightaway. As we do. Oh man, I, this, this one is kind of tight right here. Oh yeah, this, this one is kind of, kind of really, really tight. Now I'm starting to get a hang of Richmond here a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna use a, a, a. I'm gonna try to figure out this, the the setup for Richmond. I think I'm still three laps down, am I? Or two laps down? Yeah, I'm still. Yeah, I'm still two laps down. We got yeah, 52 more laps to go here in Richmond. As we're gonna be a couple of laps, we're gonna be two laps down. As Matthew Benedetto's coming right back up here. And um, he's in first place here. He needs a win. So what a great job for Matthew. If he can, if, if Benedetto, if he can win his first way and, and put that, put that Brother Woods car in victory lane for the first time this year. And, and for a very long time. You know that Brother Woods car has not seen victory lane in a long, long time. A lot of, long time. Again, a lot of dri great drivers have thrown that number 21 car, that Brother Woods car, like Ryan Blaney. And, um, you know, a couple of other uh, famous, I mean, good drivers that drove with the Brother Woods car. Affiliated with uh, Penske. Oh man, it just doesn't want to turn. As you hear the cheers fair oh it's just cheers fairy. <laughs> I said the cheers fairy. As you hear the fans cheering as um, the race is almost over. Man, what a great race this has been, man. This, this, this is the type of racing This is the type of racing that I wanted in Bristol and in Texas actually. But it was just the contact by the AI. Again guys, you see what I'm talking about with this game, right? This game like, like, it's the contact, like, like, like I said, you, you look at my, uh, my, my video at Bristol, the AI race you differently from track to track to track. They don't race you dirty all the time. It's just on certain tracks. Just like I think this game has, gives the AI an advantage, just on certain tracks. This game gives you an advantage just on certain tracks, just like I thought I had an, an advantage at Homestead, I felt like the AI was slow at Homestead, and I was just flying by them. Again, the advantages. The game gave me an advantage at Homestead. See what I'm saying, guys? 
Now, did the game fuck me over? No. The game didn't fuck me over. I could have, you know, I could have uh, won this race. I was slow. My car was slow. My car was slow. And it was, uh, so it was because I was on a really tight setup. Very realistic. Not even a tight setup, but just, just the car is slow because of the gear, because of the, of the transmission, the gear ratio. It doesn't match the track well. There's only been a couple of times where I hit the top speed that the, the car is offering. You always want to hit that top speed of what the car is uh, are offering. The, ho the, 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 the good horsepower that it has. You never want to to not let the car hit the hit, hit its top speed. You always want to let, let, let the car hit its top speed. As two reps on this. Going, uh, kind of trying to go underneath. If he does go underneath, he does a good job of staying right with me. See, I like that. This is, again guys, 104 difficulty. And he did that. Cleanly. You think I 105? He would have done that? No. 105, he would have bumped me. Just to try to get past me. This is 104 difficulty. Again, I'm going to say it again. 104 difficulty. Has better mixture of racing than 105. The only difference is they have more speed than you. And you have to wait till the tire wear wears down. That's the only difference. There's no difference between 104, 105, or even right here, buddy, or even 103. There's no difference. The only difference is is that they have more speed than you. And I, I actually, I think they're a lot more dirtier on 105. Again, two wrecks. He stayed drive for stride with me, and he did not bump me. He raced me very intelligently and cleanly. And he was, and look at, look at that. He won. He won. He won the battle. That's the only difference. That's fundamental racing. And if you think that's boring, and, and, and you're looking for contact, then go play the, the, the race. Like I said, you have no idea what racing is all about. No idea. No idea. Did I get mad, or did I try to bump Truex? No. Because he was staying strapped to side with me? No, he had that good, 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 good uh, Toyota Camry horsepower. He had that good horsepower and that, and that, and that Toyota Camry, and, and, and that's why he was able to blow right by me. And he, and he passed me realistically. Not in a cheap, cheating way. That this game sometimes does. Like on 105 difficulty. 105 difficulty is a stupid difficulty that just cheats the user without the user knowing. It does. Even on 104 difficulty, it still kind of cheats you with tire wear and fuel. As you see, I had to make a green stop, a uh, pit stop, before a caution came out. I was really looking forward. I was really looking forward for the caution, but as you, you see, I couldn't wait that long. I didn't want to have the track have randomness and, and spin me out. That's why I pitted on a green flag stop. But you see, the AI never pitted. They always, they always paid it on caution. Which I have no problem with. I mean, you know, I don't have no problem with the AI doing it. As you see, Brad Kowalski is in first place here. As actually Brad doing pretty good. He needs a win. Actually, he's been in, after DNFing, he's been in the top five. Or no, no, uh, the, the top 15 and top 10. Ever since he DNF. So if he wins here at Richmond, yeah, he'll, he'll be right up there. He just got him. Yeah, what a great opportunity for him to win. He just got into the playoffs, actually. The playoff top, the playoff standings. He just got up there. So what a great job for Brad to uh, bounce back. And, um, yeah, all the, all the Penske drivers 
I, I guess this is going to be the first Penske driver if he wins. Oh God, Brendan, save it! Oh my God, he spinned out. Nobody else. Another caution. Another caution. I try to save him, guys. Um, we're not going to hit. I'm four laps down. Again, it's the setup that I'm using. It's not because of anything else but the setup. You guys don't understand how I have to fight with this game. Not really fight with the game, but fight with my car to keep it from not drifting up near that wall right there that I'm at. You guys don't understand how I had to fight with the car. I mean, like I said in the beginning of the video, you know, I love a custom setup. I mean, not a custom setup, I'm sorry. I love the, I mean, I, I, not love, but I, I picked the, the, the setup that I used. I picked the, the, I picked the setup. I picked a really tight setup, so it's my fault. But I, like I said, I wanted to try things out. I wanted to try a different uh, default setup. I didn't want to go in the middle all the time. Or I didn't want to go, you know, like a really, really loose setup. Maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know. Maybe next time I go with a loose setup, depending on the track. I know Charlie Gagan's up first. So, um, you know, Tally Gaga's up first, so we'll, we'll see, guys, on, on Tally Gaga if I, if, I if, if, I, if I use a, a more looser type of setup. Because it is a super speedway, and, you, know, you know, you do want to use, uh, use a, a, a looser setup than what, you know, um, you don't want to be that slow. As you see push there. As we get side by side with um as we get side to side with um, um Cole Custer here. As Cole Custer he's kinda of loose there but kinda of, I think Matt Kent has saved him. Good job on Matt Kent of saving. A lot of you see a lot of that today. A lot of drivers are saving other drivers from spinning out as um, Tyler Reddick just saved Jimmy Johnson from spinning out. So again, a lot of drivers are saving these other drivers from spinning out. So what a great show of sportsmanship by all these drivers. Again, um, a lot of contact is made in Richmond. Um, so what a great job by these drivers of saving these other drivers from spinning out. It has a great show of classmen and sportsmanship. And that's what NASCAR loves to see and its competitors and its drivers and it's given out a great influence on the community as 2x is coming up after he's trying to bounce back from a um i wouldn't say a uh, yeah after that after that big big texas texas win he's being f at bristol so he you know he's trying to come back and um he's trying to actually um, um come back as he tried to cross up um, to Reddick as Reddick passed him um, and he's going to have that good, good horsepower Reddick as he burns Truex but kind of drifts up near the wall so it's kind of off or not as Truex still wins and puts the position uh, as he gets the position right back him and Truex are kind of having a duel here if you see Reddick in 13th place still a really respectable place to be uh, if you're in the top 10 as um uh, Kurt Busch was right on um, Reddick's uh, back panel and side grab. So what a great job by Kurt Busch of being up a stretch, uh, get behind, uh, get beside Reddick and drafting his back panel as he slides by uh, um, Reddick with ease and passes him with class. So what a great job. 19 more laps to go here in Richmond Raceway. And it's been a good race. It's been a really, really good race by all these drivers. Very surprised um, of what these drivers are able to do. And um, it just what great class by all the drivers today. And, and what a great class by the game. And I'm saying that as me. It's great class by the game. 
and great crash by the AI. Other than they had no crash in fucking Texas or Bristol, but they had a crash in the Richmond today. So maybe they're listening to me. Maybe the game is listening to me. I don't know, guys. Maybe the game is listening to me. But what a great crash of showmanship and racing and, and what, 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 what a great crash by that. As we got 17 more laps to go, and you see uh, Brad Kowalski is up there, and he's actually looking for his first win of the year, as he'll be the only Penske driver that actually won a race this year. So what a great job by uh, by uh, uh, Brad of actually DNFing him and Joey DNF. The only Penske driver that has not DNF yet was Ryan Blaney. So and Ryan's been consistently in top ten, but really dropped off just like Redick right here. Redick really Reddick used to that top five, and it looks like Reddick's not going to reach his goal this year. Uh, Reddick wanted to be in the top five all season long and, and build a substantial lead in points, but he's really not going to have that goal as he's going to, I think he's going to finish in the top 15. As um, Matthew, you see Matthew Benedetto, that's uh, Benedetto been in, in first place to put that Brother Woods car in, in, in first place and actually showing some good speed off of that Brother Woods car. What a good job, great job by Matthew. I really bounced it back because he had terrible, terrible finishes in um, um, Homestead in Texas. And in, I think in Bristol too, I'm not sure. I think in Bristol too, as you're coming up on Ryan Priest, Ryan Priest actually needs a win. He actually needs, he needs a win. Trying to put um, Dorothy Racing back on the map as him and Stenhouse are right there in point. And Harvard, you see Harvard coming up here. You see Truex, Truex has been uh, um, I'm very excited a little bit. We haven't seen much of 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 of, um, of, of contact. Very very uh um, very um, unlike Richmond, where Richmond is known to have a lot of contact. Guys, I just think the races in nighttime are better than the races in the daytime in this game. I just feel like you have more, just like in real life. I just think the the night races. Um, they have more grip on the on the on the asphalt of the of the of the asphalt of the track. I mean, I feel grip right now. I mean, I feel like I have grip, but it's just not. I don't know. It's just. I think night games are. I don't know. I haven't tried a night game. I mean, I'm just going by real life. As we're still four laps down, but we're still in the top. I mean, we're still in the top 15. So it's not where how many laps you are. It's just where you where you where you are uh, where you are uh, begin. As you see, um, 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 uh, Chris Boyer has absolutely been down Reddick's throat ever since Miami. He's been actually down um, Reddick's like he's been getting like kind of serious contact with Reddick. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, with Clint Boyer, but he needs to show a little bit more class and, 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 and um, he's a better driver than that. We know that by, by, by Clint Boyer here. As Bush is, Bush falling out of the top five for the first time. We've seen him, he's been, he's been absolutely dominating some of these races and actually leading a lot of laps. The only thing with him is the caution bug. The caution always seems to come out and he's also, he doesn't really seem to, um, I don't know, he doesn't really seem to, um, I'll finish strong. As you see Matt Kenseth and Kurt Busch, two Chip Gadansky racers, they're gonna have to be in the top ten if they can hold this position. As um Josh Kalicki we see in today actually leads a, a lot of laps in the first but it really dropped off. He's really trying to get back at Brad Kalowski and Brad you see Brad Lee up there. As you see Kalicki and Byron. Byron doing a very good job of um staying in the top track. As he dropped out of the playoffs top. So he's one of the drivers that dropped out, him and Eric Jones. So him and Eric Jones can have a good, good, good outing here in Richmond uh, Raceway. They can get back in the playoff talk. And you see Jimmy Johnson dive bomb towards the bottom. And you see Bush had to go up there. And you see Bush over there, right? Jimmy Bush is just really trying to uh, respect Reddick's position. He knew Reddick was down there, and he didn't really want to uh, fuck. Um, he really didn't want to uh, make contact with the um, as you see Belicki over there going side by side. I think Belicki's going to win this race right here. We know Belicki has a fast car. Reddick is going to drift up here and let Belicki through. As uh, Kyle Busch is a little slide job up there. And there he goes. So we didn't, I didn't actually know that that was actually a good race. But that's why I got a speed rating of 95, guys. is because I was running a really, really tight setup. And the game would not allow me to turn. Again, it's just a lot of track randomness. 
but I'm actually happy that I didn't finish in the top five or the top ten because Reddick, Reddick did not reach his goal. So his goal is already broken this year because, again, remember I set that goal for him being up in the top five or the top ten. He did not. He stayed in the top 15. He got 13 points. So I just wanted to experiment with different setups, and I thought Richmond would do, that. Would do a good job of doing that. Okay, I thought Richmond had a good, a really good job of doing that. Um, and you know, I just, I just think it, it is. So as we go back to the standings here, as Reddick finished in the top 15, so it wasn't a bad, bad start. It was just below Reddick standards. As we look at the standings here. As, again, Brad Kowalski, we talked about it all the time. We talked about it, guys. That Brad Kowalski needs a win. He's back in the playoffs. He's back in that spot. He's back where he belongs. In that playoff talk. He's already in the playoffs. Can he build off of that? And or can he even help his teammates? With, like, Ryan Blaney. With Joey Logano. Can they get a win for Penske? As you see, Matthew Benedetto came in sec second place. Would agree, but Matthew Benedetto actually he he led the lot, he led the race for a couple times, and actually put that Brother Woods car in second place. So this is the highest thing that uh, uh, Benedetto got all year long. As you see, Josh Palicki still in the top five. He's been in that top five with that top ten all season long. He's done it, and, and Reddick actually fell out of the top ten. So what a great job by Josh Palicki of keeping in the top 10 but still needs that win as William Byron actually fell out of the the, 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 the top of uh, the playoff talk and he actually dropped out of the playoff standings but can he get that back in with a nice win to or with a nice top five today in Richmond so what a great job by William Byron of trying to get back into the playoffs as Kevin Harbert got in got fifth spot so what a great job for him as he accumulates on a lot of points as Kurt Busch got a top 10, so what a great job by Kurt. He's been really bouncing back from Daytona um, and, and, and just building off of, of, of great, great starts. As Martin Truex finally did good and got in the top 10 after DNFing at Bristol. After that huge win at Texas, he DNF at Bristol and he had a great showing and a great outing today. And Kyle Busch, rowdy, 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 rowdy Kyle Busch. He uh, fell out of uh, first place. I think he was. I don't know if he was leading. I think he was leading, and then he got a fell out of it. But he still got a top ten, so that's always good for Roddy Cook. But still, he needs that very good win. The caution bug always seems to come back at him. And as Jimmy Johnson, after getting a couple of bad bad uh, finishes, got back in the top ten here in Richmond. So what a great job by Jimmy and Clint Boyer. It's absolutely doing a horrible job for Stuart Haas. But what a great job of him, even him getting back into the top 10. you got to figure, he's been bumping Reddick here. He's been bumping Reddick. He's been kind of sidewinding Reddick. He's been trying to get underneath Reddick's skin. Reddick is not letting that uh, affect him. But, again, Clint Boyer. Is something wrong with Clint? Like, why is he trying to do this to Reddick? Reddick doesn't know. But we'll find out later on as the season goes. As Clint Boyer rounds out the top 10. There you go, guys. That's the stand. I'm not going to go like what I usually do. It's just too long to go there. You know, and I, I just want to hurry up and finish the race so the video won't be that long. But, I mean, you guys can look for yourself. I mean, I fell out of the top 10 and actually was four laps down, which actually, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, it was the setup that I was using, I think. Um, it, it, it is. It is. It is the setup that I was using. Actually, I want to actually see where Eric Jones ended up as Denny Hamlin uh, was 14th. I was, I was above Denny, wow. And Alex Bowman, after, look at Alex Bowman, after having that good, good, strong start, them two starts of being third and, you know, getting to the top five, he dropped, he was the top 15 uh, driver. So, you know, not a bad, not, not really a bad look. It's just, you know, it, I don't know, he just dropped out of the thing. As his, you see his uh, teammate, Chase Elliott, what a great job by Team Hendricks. Of, of, yep, and Eric Jones got himself back into the top 20 after he was two laps down. And Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano uh, was a top 20. So again, all that's left out, Ryan Newman, uh, Ricky Stenhouse, Christopher, I mean, Chris Buescher, Christopher Bell, Austin Dillon still accepting mediocrity. Um, 
Hey, okay, I'm gonna roll up, fell off um, after having them, them, them good start, but really fell off too. And there you go, guys. Ryan Priest still needs a win, and BJ McLeod DNF, and Justin Haley DNF, and Ryan Priest again DNF. This is the third time that Ryan Priest DNF. So not a great job for Ryan Priest, as he's absolutely fallen off the face of the earth. And there you go, guys. There goes your race results at Richmond as we continue. As what a well-deserved win by uh, Brad Kowalski. We talked about it all season long about Brad. When is the, the old Brad going to come? We thought it would be Ryan Blaney or we thought it would be Joey Logano, who actually won a race for Team Penske this year. Then it wasn't the case. It was Brad Kowalski. Brad Kowalski showing the, that that showing that champion that he used to be and getting that first win for uh, Roger Penske Racing. So what a great job by Brad. As um, you look at the standings, um, um, uh, uh, I, I was going to say Richmond, guys, I'm sorry. Redick, actually, still in first place with a huge lead. So, you know, this this this, this win, I mean, this, this race really didn't hurt him in points. But, uh, like I said, guys, yesterday at the at the post game, where this, where you had it, Reddick has had a, a, a stellar season this year. And he'll win a race and he'll lose a race after he's doing a magical job, a magical season. But inconsistency with Reddick and inconsistency with that car. So we don't know. Will he win here at Talladega? It's a super speedway. Anybody can win. So again, can he get can he get another win at Talladega? Can, can he and, 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 and over the trend bust? And, 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 and the streak end of him winning a race and losing a race. And will he, or will he fall off the face of the earth and start losing a lot of races? We don't know. But continue, continue watching to find out. As Kyle Busch absolutely wins the point standings, um, he, he actually uh, beat Blaney. Because um, Blaney was in second place for a long time in the point standings. And he passed despite not having a win this year as Ryan Blaney is third place and Kevin, despite not having a win and he's still beating Kevin Harvick um, uh, despite Kevin Harvick um, getting a win and Josh Palicki right there he's still there and Denny Hamlin is in sixth and Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, Ryan Newman and Alex Bowman rounds out the top ten in the points so there you go guys so those are your results as we close the book here on Richmond as fastest lap was Josh Balicki. He showed he had a good, good, good fast car today as Josh Balicki again led the most laps. So again, he's showing that good speed and never letting off the gas. On the move, he started fourth, finished first. So what a great job by Brad Kozlowski of starting in the back and starting first. And you see uh, uh, um, uh, BJ McLeod started 11th in DNF. So there goes your results, guys. What a great race. I really enjoyed this race. Again, I didn't use commentary in this game because I wanted to talk about the game again and the good things about the game and clear things up with me and the custom setups and, and the AI. That's what I wanted to address. When I said that custom setups were trash, I didn't mean that they were that trash. I didn't really mean it. I meant they were trash if you use them with the AI. I don't think you should use custom setups with the AI because you have an advantage over the AI because again this track is not real life These, this game is not real life it doesn't represent racing real it has some good elements to racing but it doesn't represent real life as track temperatures this, th this game has track randomness and it's, it's all because of the setup that you use that's why you can't run like again I just proved it I used a really really tight setup on Richmond and I did it for a purpose just to show you guys just to show you guys that it's the setup that you use if it wasn't the setup they used I would have still got a top 10 so all them races that I was completing I was using the right amount of setup for the for the tracks as you go back to my Miami video I told you I had to loosen up the car to be successful so again, it has, all has to do with your setups in this game. It all has to do with your cars, just like in real life. But this game is not real life. It doesn't, I don't know guys, it just doesn't have track temperature. You can't tune your car day by day, just like I was talking about the Austin Dillon 
when Austin Dillon won in real life at the Coca-Cola 400 at Daytona. If that's the case, if that setup worked that day, it should work all the time, right? No, it doesn't happen. Why? Because of the track temperatures of day by day. It doesn't work like that. Drivers don't use the same setup that they win in because of track temperatures. You see what I'm saying? It's not track randomness. It's what you use. It's the type of setup that you use. Just like I was talking about in Bristol. Where you can have a tight setup or a loose setup. And that causes accidents. So it's all about the setup. It's all about the car setup in this game that you use. And if it, if it wasn't like that, then you'll be winning a lot of races. You'll be untouchable. You can use any setup and be untouchable. Because this game doesn't have track randomness. That's all I'm trying to say. And if you don't believe me, then I don't know what to tell you. But like I said, whoever's watching, post a comment. Post a comment on my channel. And let me know if that's how you feel. Because I do feel like that. And also, I feel a lot, too. I feel like the AI in some tracks have an advantage over you. And it's true. And I feel like in some tracks that you have an advantage. Like, like what I did in Miami. The AI felt slow. I felt fast. And I had the tire wear on normal wear. Just like in Texas when I was using that setup. I felt like the track, I was not benefiting from the track. Even though I almost won. But again, the only reason why I didn't win it because I felt snappy again. I felt like the game was pulling me into that wall. And I really had to let off the gas because in that finish line, it wanted to pull me into pit road. So again, there's track randomness. It's the setup that you use. It's the car setup that you use. That's why on a, on a custom setup, you can actually dominate on the track. And say, oh, this is a good setup. Yeah, because you are benefiting from the track randomness. That's all it is. But, I'm going to get off schedule there. There you go, guys. Those are your results at Richmond. As we close the book on Richmond, Virginia. As I mean, I, I still got a top 15. I mean, uh, I mean, you, you can't do no better than that. You know, I should have dropped even better. I should have been a top 20. <laughs> I should have been like in, in the 30s with that setup. I mean, that's how bad it was. I mean, I, I should have dropped even more. But again, the CPU's tires were wearing out. They were getting slower, just like in real life. As we completed uh, 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 Richmond, it was a 400. It was a four 400 lap, but it didn't feel like it. it felt like a six or 700. It felt way longer than Bristol. I don't know about that track. It just felt like it was really, really long. But anyways, guys, th th that's that's my. Uh, I wouldn't say rant. That's my explanation. I didn't say that track setups are garbage in this game. I just think that they're useless a little bit. Like, I mean, you can use them, but they're just negate to negate track randomness. That's what I feel. You know, they're just to negate the track randomness. It's not to have an advantage over the AI. It's just to negate track randomness. That's all it does. I mean, it's, yeah, it helps you go faster and everything because you can turn better. But that's all it is. I mean, <laughs> it's not like a simulated racer like Project Cars or 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 um, or um, Arsada Corsa or, um, you know, like Dirt 4 and, and, and Gran Turismo and Project Cars 2. There's nothing like them games where you need a custom setup. But this game, I just don't think that you need one. I just, if you want to keep things competitive with the AI, don't use a custom setup. And if you use a custom setup and you're still not successful, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, look at me. I have not used a custom setup and I w I'm, I'm pretty much dominating the computer on 104 difficulty. And you see, on 104 difficulty, I was four laps down. Four laps down. So there's nothing with 105 difficulty. Again, there's nothing different. The only difference is, is that the, the, on 105 difficulty, the AI has more speed than you. That's the only difference. 
You see, I was losing to Martin Truex Jr. I was losing to top cars the way it should be. I wasn't losing to Ch Chad Fincham, or I wasn't losing to, um, not even Josh Balicki I was losing to. I don't even think his car is really that fast. But in this game, he's on a hot streak. But anyways, guys, I mean, I I'm not losing to guys I'm not supposed to lose to. And that's what I love about 104 difficulty. On 105 difficulty, everybody's the fucking same. Chad Fincham can be fucking Kevin Harvick. And he can have the mo a lot of speed like Kevin Harvick's car. It's unfucking, it's unrealistic. That's why I say 105 difficulty is garbage, man. It's just a fucking bullshit difficulty. That's unrealistic. 104 difficulty is the right mixture of good fundamental racing. You see that? You see? I can enjoy it. You can see on Richmond, they love to dive bomb and go right underneath you and go underneath that corner. They'll have magical grip. On 105 difficulty, it's not like that in 104. They respect your position. They respect your position. That's what I'm trying to say. They respect your position. And that's all I want. That's all everybody should want in a racer with their competitors. I don't know, guys. I come from very clean racing. In a very clean racing background. I bumped the AI. Yeah, I bumped the AI and spit them out sometimes. But that's not my fault. That's the stupid game's fault. Because I'm not trying to do that. It's just the stupid fucking guy the randomness of the fucking... Dumb AI that fucking, when you make contact with them on a short track, they fucking goddamn spin out. It's broken and it's, it needs to be fixed. That's not my fault. That's the stupid game's fault. But other than that, other than that, this game is great. This game is great. You see what happened today. Nice, clean racing. They weren't bumping me at all cost, like in fucking Bristol and Texas. Again, it's what they do from track to track to track. They are programmed to play a certain way from track to track to track. That's all I'm trying to say. Post a comment if you think that I'm right. As we go to the, uh, I know I'm right. I don't have to. I don't, you guys don't have to tell me anything because I know what's right. I know it's right. I know that I'm right on every single thing that I said today about this game. I studied it and and, and I broke it fundamentally. I, I I went in deep into this game and went deep into its roots and its mechanics. And I figured it out. That's why I say, World Five difficulty. It's it's a it's not a joke. It's 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 just if you want unrealistic fucking shit. Like Chad Fincham should not be fucking beating Kyle Busch, or she should not even be up near Kyle Busch's level on straightaway speed. You put it on one hundred five, you can. I don't know. I I just I just think it's a joke. Cuz everybody's the same. I don't like that. You should that's not what racing is all about. If everybody was the same on if that really happened in real life, you think Kyle Busch would be where he is right now today? You think he'll be an accomplished driver if Chad Fincham can actually stand up with uh, Kyle Busch? No, he'll be a regular fucking driver just like anybody else. Chad Fincham does not have a good team. He does not have a good racing team. A nice, good, established racing team. His car is not fast. His car is not that established like Kyle Busch's in Joe Gibbs Racing. That's all I'm trying to say. And when you put this game on 105 difficulty, every all the bots are fucking the same. And I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It's unrealistic. That's why I play at 104 difficulty. Because I like realism. I like realism in games. In racing games. It pisses me off. It's especially when, again, when the computer can have some kind of damage on their car and still keep up. 
when I have a clean car. No, it's not how it goes. As we look at the point standing, guys. I'm sorry. I, I, I just need to get out that. As we look at the point, the playoff standings again. Uh, William Byron has got out of the playoffs. William Byron and um, William Byron and um, who else? Um, um, Eric Jones fell out of the playoffs. Okay, so I'm I'm still in the lead, and Kevin Harvick is second. Denny Hamlin, Brad Kowalski finally jumped up from being way in the bottom. I mean, you got to you got to figure. Go back at my uh, Bristol. Standings, and he was down. He was way in the bottom. He was a 16 driver. Now look at from that win and them points that he got. He's in fourth place in the playoff standings. So what a great job by Brad. I knew they couldn't keep Brad down forever. As Martin Truex is five, Jimmy Johnson is in six. Kyle Busch, despite not having a win, which I think he's going to actually get a win this year. And you know that's Kyle Busch. That's Roddy Kyle, and he's going to get a win. And, and, and Blaney's in eighth. And um, Josh Balicki dropped down. So Josh Balicki um, had a fast car today in Richmond, but really didn't fit. Again, he's just he's up there, but he's not he's not finishing well. I mean, he's finishing. He's getting top fives and top tens, but he's really not finishing like that first place. He needs that win. As he dropped down, and Kurt Busch uh, moved up. Joey Logano, eleventh uh, place. He stayed neutral, and Ryan Newman stayed neutral, and Alex Bowman stayed neutral. Matthew Benedetto. Could have had a chance to win, but really fell off. But he got second place, and that's all you can ask for. As he moved up, as again, William Byron, we said it again yesterday, he fell out of the playoffs talk, out of the standings. Now, with that, with, with, with getting fourth place and getting a top five position, he's back in it. So, what a great job by William. As Chase Elliott is still that bubble driver and still right there, but really in danger. Him and Byron really need to step it up. And get out of the playoffs. I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, but if they want to stay in the playoffs. So again, guys, somebody dropped out, and I think it was B.J. McLeod. Yeah, B.J. McLeod. After B.J. McLeod DNF'd, after getting that huge, he's been on fire these last couple of races. He's been on fucking fire. So B.J. McLeod, he dropped out. He dropped out of the, of the playoff talk. So can he bounce back, just like Brad did? Um, but who got in? I th yeah, yeah, William Byron got in. And um, who else got in? I think that was it. Mm. Yeah, William Byron did. Yeah, William Byron did. Uh, and 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 um, Eric Jones. Eric Jones again. The the only Joe Gibbs racer that's not in the bubble talk, or not in the playoffs uh, talk. He after that DNF, he just fell off. He, he's been getting top 20s, though. Like, he's staying in that top 15, top 20. So, if he can stay consistent and actually shock and win a race, I think, he has a good, I think he has a good chance to win at Darlington. I don't know why. I think in the playoffs, he'll win at Darlington. But will, will it be too late for him to be in the playoffs? He needs, he needs, that, he needs one win to get back in here. Uh, that D-Walk car is, is, is a much better car than, than, than getting top 20s. Okay, so that, there you go. Um, as we switch to the season standings, as you see, Reddick is still right there. Kyle Busch second. Ryan Blaney is third. Kevin Harvick is fourth. Josh Balicki is fifth. Denny Hamlin is in sixth. Kurt Busch is in seventh. Joey Logano is in eighth. And Ryan Newman in tenth. And again, Alex Bowman rounds out the top ten in the point standings. So there you go, guys. Those are your standings in the point standings. As Okay, who needs wins? Daniel Suarez needs a win. As uh, he had a top 10 yesterday. I think he did. Yeah, he had a top 10 or a top 15. I'm not sure. Got to go back and look. As Cole Custer. As he had a t another top 10 in. I think it was. I don't know. I, like I said, some of these drivers had top 10s. I think it was. In, yeah. Yeah, it was in Texas. I think he finished well in Bristol too. So um, all he needs to do is continue to do that. As Cole Custer needs to win. Matt Kenseth needs a win. Um, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. still looking for that first win. I actually think he'll win one today, guys. Uh, I mean, in the season. I think he'll win one in a road course. That's what I think he will. I think he'll win one in a road course. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was, as John Hunter Nemechek actually needs a win. Actually, he's been actually having an inconsistent year like Reddick. He'll show signs of a fast car, and then he'll be slow again. So, John Hunter Nemechek really needs to figure that out. 
Who needs points? BJ McLeod needs points to get back in the playoff standings. He is dropping like a rock after having that good, good hot start. Clint Boyer, actually, at, despite having a top 10 today, actually needs a lot of points because he of the DNFs. Eric Jones fell off like a rock after DNFing. And so is Christopher Bell and Eric Amarola is falling tremendously. So there you go, guys. There you go. The only Stuart Haas guy I think that's actually doing anything is Kevin Harvick and Cole Custer. Eric Amarola and Clint Boyer should just give up on the season because I don't think they're going to do anything. Not unless they sneak out a win. But there you go, guys. There it is. That's it. That's Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick. Again, Tyler Reddick failed his goal. He failed his goal. But, I'm going to say something. He failed his goal, but. So now that's over. He failed his goal for the season. But he's still in first place. Can he get, after that, the pressure's off of him from getting consecutive top fives and tens. The pressure's off of him. Can he get his buddy, Austin Dillon, going? And I think they will in Talagago. I think, I think Reddick um, is going gonna, is gonna to help out Dillon. You know, in Super Speedway, you could draft. I think he's gonna do that. I think I think I think Reddick is actually gonna help out Dylan and get him into that playoff, or or not that playoff, but he's gonna get that. I don't know, guys. I just think that he's gonna get that nice, good uh, draft, and he's gonna help Dylan win. So I don't know. We'll see about we'll see about Tyler, because Tyler, you know, he he failed his goal, but he did not fail his goal of of being on top. He wants to stay consistently and start getting points. So that's all. So now that the pressure's off, that he doesn't need to be in the top ten or top or top five anymore, he can focus on his buddy, his brother, which is which is AD Austin Dillon, and get him into the playoffs. So RCR can be a force in the playoffs. So there you go, guys. That's what's gonna happen. Hope that happens. But there you go, guys. That's Tyler Reddick. He got he failed his goal, but he did not fail off of his season goal, which is that championship. And get an AD in the playoffs. And get an Austin Dillon going. That's what he wants. So there you go guys. That closes the book on Richmond, Virginia. That was an excellent, excellent race. And I really enjoyed that race with the AI. I really enjoyed it. As we go to the Geico 500 at Talladega. Talladega Speedway. So here we go. Back to the Super Speedway. And back to Tyler Reddick's old ways. And he loves them Super Speedways. And I can run the top up here and tally. So there we go. So here we go, guys. That's it. I'll probably stream it a little later for the Talagaga. And um, yeah, depending on you know my exercises and my um, my lunch I'm gonna have. But there you go, guys. Hope you find this video on YouTube. If you do, smash it a like. Give me support. Keep supporting me. And you know, I'll be back very soon with more content.